what would make you wake up, go to your daughter's room, open up your laptop, write down impossible things, get in a borrowed 15 passenger van, drive over to a $54 million arena, take this picture, and tell everybody you will one day own it? Crazy face. What makes you get back into the 15 passenger van, go to your current situation, get on a platform in front of skeptical people and say and this? we're going to have to go to another place. Crazy face. What would make you turn down $2 million, give to other people when you were in need? Say you will have no debt, and believe not just for a building, but for the entire block. Crazy faith. What would make you embrace the tears after the confirmed diagnosis, acknowledge the lies and the fears, but still believe for the healing in your child? Crazy faith. What would make you stop waiting on the crowd to agree with what you know but they cannot see? Stop playing it safe on the boat. It's time for you to do the impossible and walk on the sea. You've got to see it before you see it. Yeah, maybe it might sound crazy, but baby, your purpose can't afford for you to be lazy. It's only crazy until it happens. All right, I got an assignment, and y'all, somebody's faith is just trying to derail my assignment today. Um, but today I feel like I, I have been given specifically um, a message for a group of people that have been going on this journey of crazy faith with us. And um, today I pray that you're seen. Like, I, I know that in the 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 loud and the rumbunctious and the 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 real uh strong bravado of crazy faith there's a group of people that kind of get lost in the sauce and god stopped everything and said michael on on this i, I told y'all it's crazy till christmas <laughs> and that means we only got two more weeks and god said today i need you to talk to a specific group of people on week 12 of crazy faith who, who may be in the place that they're not ready to believe out loud and strong because of the damage that's happened to them and i know there's some people in this room but today i want to talk to those whose faith has been fractured today my assignment in week 12 of crazier faith is to talk to people who have fractured faith. And I don't know what the situation is. I don't know what the circumstance is. I don't know where you lost something. But for some reason, every time you get ready to believe God, there's something in you that feels eerily devastating about stepping out again. And today, some of you may have masked it so good under church lingo and language and shouting and all the different things that that you don't even realize that when it comes time for you to do the one thing that god requires to please him without faith it's impossible to please god because it's the standard it's like every time i get here god i ain't got nothing to give you i don't have no more belief in me God didn't come through the way I thought he was going to come through when I prayed that one time. I gave in the crazy faith offering two years ago. But I don't still see some of the things that I believed for then coming to pass in my life. Fractured faith. See, fractures are the things that don't fully break it. Uh, they didn't make you stop going to church. It didn't make you stop listening to the worship music. It just made you not believe it as much. It made you not really be able to identify and put your weight on what God says. 
So when we, when, we, when we sing songs, all of my help comes from you, Lord, you say it, but what you feel is some help. Like, like I'll say the right thing, but I feel different because my faith is fractured. And today, if your faith has been fractured, I've been um, I'm in a meeting with God about you. All week, he's been wrecking me about you. He said, Michael, you can rally the truth, but I don't want you to leave nobody behind. And last week, the last couple of weeks, people have been rallying in crazy faith and giving and believing and all this other stuff. But there's a small group who was like, well, they can go ahead and do that. And God said, everybody stop. We're going back to get every one of them who felt unseen unheard and we're going to help you understand what God can do with fractured faith someone in the Bible who as I was studying I said God you got to make this very plain because we got to see this in the word because there's nothing that we teach that is not found in the word of God and I started walking through the life of Joseph not Jesus's daddy Joseph I'm talking about Joseph with the coat of many colors. Y'all remember Joseph that his daddy loved him a lot, so he got him a real nice, colorful Gucci uh, jacket and gave it to him in front of all of his brothers. Maybe not the wisest decision, and he didn't get them nothing, not even a Forever 21 jacket, but he just got the one, this big Gucci just down, like, and, 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 and. And I got to really paraphrase this whole story because, and I want you to study the Bible on your own time this week. This story takes place in 11 chapters of the Bible. So today I can't specifically go to every one of them, but I, I want to jog your memory in what happens in Joseph's life. What ends up happening for this young man in Genesis chapter 37 is that um, he, he starts his life with favor. Somebody shot at me favor. Favor. He starts his life with favor he didn't ask for. Now, I need everybody to understand that there are certain things that happen in your life and you ain't even asked for it. Joseph didn't put on his crazy faith card. Hopefully my daddy will give me a coat of of many coat. Like he didn't ask for anything. He found favor with his natural father and he was given favor he didn't ask for. But what ends up happening is this favor that he didn't ask for was the start of his first fracture. Now, I need you to see this. Joseph was gifted by God to have dreams. He goes to sleep and he has these dreams. And, and, and he has dreams that one day that, that these, these um, bushels would bow to him and all this different stuff. And what it did is it represented that his brothers would one day be bowing to him. And, and Joseph was immature in his ability to process what God was doing in his life. And I just want to encourage somebody right now. Everything that God tells you is not for everybody else because sometimes God's doing something in you and the greatest time to kill something is when it's in seed form. And, and, and you can't always say everything to everybody everybody because you might cause uncalled for warfare this was warfare that Joseph is going to have because he told his brothers his dream so he tells his brothers like yeah one day this is gonna happen they're like we hate you we hate you and we gonna kill you and Joseph's like hey I just, it was just a dream but this favor And these dreams produced the fracture. And literally his brothers threw him into a pit. Now I need everybody to see this. Write this point down because it may apply to you. Many of our first fractures come from family. Jesus. I don't want to go into a family therapy session today. But there are some things that your family called you. Oh, look at you. You just out there. You always doing stupid stuff. You just always dumb. Why you do that dumb stuff? And somewhere in your mind, after hearing that from age two and three and four and five and six, oh, we see you. You always want to be seen. You're good at everything. Look at you. Straight A's. Like, aren't you supposed to be? 
but your own insecurities about how you feel now have made, I'm your seed and now you're, why you talk so white? You mean proper? Why you talk so black? Like, I'm telling you, this is on every, and what ends up happening is that the, the life that God's called you to lead in a perfect, clear, clean, pure way, what you're supposed to see somehow becomes, what's the word? What was supposed to be beautiful for years. What was supposed to be undefiled in a clear picture. Now has fractures. That's what my mom said. That's what my dad didn't say. Oh, you thought fractures could only be caused by what was said? Fractures can be caused because of what was not said. Ah. That was the classmate. That was the cousin. You only saw him twice. You didn't even know how they were related in the family. But somehow when they came around, they made you feel less than about yourself. Because you didn't have the Jordans or you didn't have the polo boots or you didn't have. I'm just saying real stuff. And now you're living your life all the time. Well, you don't got hair like that or we don't got money like that. And many of our first fractures come from family. Joseph's first fracture comes from his own brothers. And he literally gets thrown in the pit. So I just want you to think about Joseph sitting at the bottom of the pit, fractured, trying to figure out, like, I just, I just wanted to be like my brothers. I just wanted to be around them. I just wanted, and how did I end up here? But when you're fractured, watch this. Here's the grace of God. You can still find favor. See, see, what the enemy would like to convince you is that your fracture has now disqualified you and now you're a failure. But I came to tell somebody today who may be fractured in an area of your life that the fracture does not disqualify you and make you a failure. The fracture is now a testimony that God can still use broken things and you can still find favor when you're fractured. Let me prove it to you. The original intent for Joseph was not to throw him into the pit. It was to kill him. So the pit was actually God's provision. Some of y'all are complaining about where you are right now. But it could have been way worse because the enemy's original plan was to kill you, to kill the dream, to kill the relationship, to kill. Oh. But I'm telling you, it may be in the pit, but you can find favor even in the pit. The fracture was supposed to be fatal, B. But God sent a Reuben. A Reuben is a brother of Joseph that was conspiring to kill him, but something in him would not let the other brothers go through with the full plan. So he was a part of it, but somehow God raised him up to spare him and bring favor. What are you saying, Pastor Mike? I'm praying that God in your pit situations, even right now, would raise up a Reuben. That what the plan was for your business and for your family, even if they're the ones trying to do it to you, something will rise up on the inside of them and say, we can't kill him. Some of y'all, y'all live perfect lives. But in my life, I need some Rubens to raise up. You can hate on me, but you can't take me out. And Reuben was used to be able to be God's favor, even though Joseph was in a pit. Can we stop and think for a second? How many places we hate that we're in? 
but it may be God's provision. It didn't take away the fracture, but it was supposed to be fatal. And we found God's favor. Pastor Mike, what, what are you saying to me right now? Because they didn't kill him, his story didn't end. <laughs> he finally gets a rope and somebody's pulling him up. And if it was me, I would be like, ah, oh, they came to this and this was a joke. Y'all punked me. Okay. And it wasn't his brothers anymore. It was slave traders. And Joseph now has been betrayed by his brothers, but now sold out by his brothers to somebody else. And these people are about to take him from everything that he's ever known, language, culture. He's not going to stay in the same place. He's going to Egypt. And many times when God moves you out of your comfort zone, another fracture. How am I supposed to be fruitful here? You're going to take me from everything that I know and still not change the requirement of my purpose? See, a lot of people think that the fracture changes the expectation. This mirror was created to produce an image back to me. And even though it's fractured, it still has to do what it was created to do and how many of us have put an out of use sign on our life no longer usable because of the fracture no it's not ideal but if if the if the point was to be able to see I can still see even though this mirror is fractured. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but this is a prophetic sign of what God is telling you right now. I know you've been fractured. I know they left you. I know they ostracized you. I know you were left for dead. I know they sold you out. I know that it didn't happen in the timing that you thought it would happen, but there is still use for you. He's fractured. And now he's sold to Potiphar's house. And he goes to Potiphar's house, but he still finds, everybody say favor. favor. I'm trying to help somebody that has been in a paralyzed position thinking that God can't use you yeah. until you have no fractures. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That he's not requiring your faith and your action. But in Genesis 39, verse 2, it says, this is, oh, I love the Bible. Because then you can take what God has already said and adopt it to your life. Yeah. The Lord was with Joseph. There is another level of confidence that you can walk in, even when you're fractured, when you know that the Lord is with you. Somebody say, the Lord is with me. Lord. You didn't say it like you meant it. Say, the Lord is with me. The Lord is with me. And the Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything that he did as he served in the home of his Egyptian master. He's a slave succeeding. He's a slave. That means he don't make his own hours, do his own thing, making a. He is still succeeding in a game that is rigged against him. I came to tell somebody who's saying they can't flourish at the job that they're in. That you can't do what God's called you to do because you don't have the resources. God says he will make you succeed in an arena that is rigged for your failure. If he's with you okay Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with you hold on God will make the people who's supposed to be controlling you recognize that the Lord is with you I just want you to see this this pleased Potiphar so he soon made Joseph his personal attendant he put him in charge of his entire household how was a slave running the entire some 
Some of y'all are about to walk into a season where your title and your authority don't match. You can call me a slave if you want to. You can call me a servant if you want to. You can call me the vice, 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 junior, junior president over the janitor closet if you want to. But my title does not match the authority that I've been given. It doesn't say that they changed this title, but it was over the entire thing. And if you could be humble enough. Uh oh, there's that cuss word again. Humility. If you could be humble enough to not need them to know who you are as long as he knows what he's giving you. Brother Billy, you'll be able to call shots, make changes, influence culture. And they don't even have to know. Ah, let me stop. That's, that's crazy. Like, they don't even have to know. In, 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 an, in an era where we want everybody to know, we want to be able to Instagram and Facebook and tweet. Just got the job as the... God said, would you rather be impactful or just have influence? Take all my followers as long as I can get the message of Jesus to culture. However you want to do it, God. You can do it. And that's where we have to get to a place where even if they don't know, that ain't even in my notes. But he put him in charge of his entire household and everything he owned. From the day Joseph was put in charge, listen to this. From the day that he was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless Potiphar's household for Joseph's sake. You might want to watch how you treat me. Because the favor that's on this is attached to me. Some of y'all, Joseph was, y'all don't even understand that God has put his favor on your life even though you're fractured. And God said, when you show up, don't look at the fracture. Walk in the favor. When you show up, don't point out the fractures. Step in your faith. Yeah, I don't know who I'm. When you show up, don't maximize the fractures. Step in the favor. Do, do you know how many times I've walked into rooms knowing my deficiencies? And God would tell me as I hit the threshold of the door, they don't know who you used to be. And they don't know who I've created you to be. So when you step in this room, step in the authority I've given you. I've sat with billionaires, millionaires, bank presidents, athletes, superstars. And every time I'm sitting there, I'm not showing them. Look at all the things that God said. No, 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 no. We'll deal with that. But while you're fractured. Uh, the church, we've done a bad job of thinking that God only blesses you at the end of your deliverance. At the end, everything's gone. God said, I'll still raise you up and still favor you and still use you with your fractures. Watch how you treat me. Because the favor... That's on this place. Uh, all his household affairs ran smoothly. And his crops and livestock flourished. So Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. With Joseph there, he didn't worry about a thing. Except Popeyes or Chick-fil-A. Except what kind of food he ate. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, write this point down. When you're fractured, you can still be fruitful. I'm coming to encourage somebody that feels like everything has to be put back together. 
before God uses you. And Joseph was fractured by his family, fractured by his own blood brothers, fractured by the title of slave. He was never a slave where he came from. He, he was his dad's favorite. He probably never did any of those jobs at his own home. He gets totally taken out of the context that he's familiar with and brought into this place. He's fractured, but somehow God still makes him fruitful. I prophesy over somebody watching right now. That your fractures will no longer keep you from being fruitful. If you receive it, why don't you give God some praise right now? So he's fruitful, but fractured. Favored, but fractured. And then in Genesis 39, he comes encounter. He, he has an encounter with the cougar of compromise. He has an encounter with the cougar of compromise. If y'all don't know the story that Potiphar's wife says, oh my God, y'all said, you looking good over there. And takes an interest in Joseph while he's being fruitful and while he's fractured. Ooh, watch this. This is a dangerous place to be. To be being successful and fruitful but still having very broken pieces on the inside of you. And this is where the enemy always comes to try and get you to compromise. Beware when everything's working and you have not healed internally. The people that are coming into your life are going to present you with compromise. Some of you right now are living in decisions that you made because the inside, you, you got to a platform, but you were still insecure. So you use the platform and the Gucci and the Louis and this and that and her and him and this and that to make you isolated and feel better about yourself. And now compromise is coming into your life. I, I'm just saying that everybody's going to face this. This woman comes up to Joseph and tries to fracture him again. Now, I want everybody to see. Most people wouldn't even be mad at homeboy. Can we be real? You're a slave. This is the boss's chick. And she trying to bless you. She's trying to lay hands. Nobody will ever know. Oh, see, because compromise is not about what you do that everybody sees. Compromise is about what you do that God sees. A lot of you have not compromised in your actions, but you've compromised in your heart. You haven't even had the opportunity yet, but you know that if you were presented with the opportunity, oh, come on. Okay, I'm going to just be real, real right here, okay? So back when we was in high school, like the dudes would like, like, be like, I don't even know why I'm saying this. But people would be basically like, okay, if Halle Berry came up to you butt naked and you was married would, and nobody would find out, what, and I said, I'm gonna say it, what would you do? That's how I'm gonna say it, because that's not what we said. <laughs> Y'all may need to find another pastor, but I'm just being authentic. They'd be like, what would you do? And everybody be like, you know what I would do. You know what I would do. What that started to do in my life when I played those games was have me start practicing compromise. 
What I was saying is I committed to something, but if nobody would find out, I would still do what pleases my flesh and what others would judge me on if I didn't do it. You had a chance to be with. And many of us in our hearts have been practicing compromise. I can't even stay there. But some of us have lied on our taxes for years. You're claiming dependence that don't even exist. And you gave your crazy faith offering, but God can't promote you because you still have the heart of compromise. So if you do it for $38 off of your tax bill, And I don't know what your encounter of compromise is, but all of us are presented with it. But this is what I love about Joseph. It says in Genesis 39, verse 2. No, 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 no. Let's go 39, verse 8. But Joseph refused. Look, woman. This is what it says. He told her, look. Because okay. don't think it's easy. Don't think she might have been like, Joseph. And, and what I'm saying to you is he said, look. My master. Could you please cover up, please? Could you just... Because sometimes you may not be able to even entertain it. How do, you, how do you ward against lustful youth? It says flee. I, this ain't even a part of it, Charles. It doesn't say consult with it. It doesn't say let's figure out a way that we can still be friends. How do I not end up on my back? I gotta, I have to. Everybody say run. He was probably speaking to her while backing up. My master trusts me with everything in his household. No one here has more authority than I do. He's held back nothing from me, and I see you trying to do the same thing. <laughs> but you're his wife. How could I do such a wicked thing? How could I do such a... Wi wicked means twisted like wicker furniture, like where the, the, the wood is twisted. It just means how could I do such a twisted thing? But watch what he says to end it. It would be a great sin, not against Potiphar. He deserved this. I should smash his wife. Like for what he's done to me, for putting, putting me in slavery for some, he said, even though he deserves it, even though I would be justified, even though this feels good, this would be a great sin against God. What happens when your decisions aren't informed by who it hurts on earth? but who it hurts in heaven. When you lie, you hurt God. When you, when you, it's not, there's a little white lie. There's no such thing as a little white lie. In heaven, it's recorded. They lied. For what? Because you was late and you watched the, the TV show 
and you didn't leave when you were supposed to, just own it. Like God would rather you be integrous. Here's a word. Here's another cuss word. It's integrity. Integrity is something Bishop has taught me. It's something that you, that, that, that you hold yourself to a standard because you know God's watching. It's what you do when people are in the room and what you do when people aren't in the room. It's handling yourself in a way that, that allows you to be able to, this is what God told me, integrity is workout so that when the weight of compromise comes, you can lift it. What most people have not worked integrity enough that when compromise comes, you have no strength to move it. And, and Joseph, where there could have been another fracture. I need everybody to see this. Joseph stopped it. We're talking about people who have been fractured in their faith. But when compromise came, this is my prayer for you. That when compromise comes and it looks easy, uh, that you would stop. You would stop and say, no, I would have to lie about my credit score to get into this apartment. But that wouldn't be integrity. So I'm going to tell you it's a 540. And I know that probably will keep me out of the running, but I just wanted to be honest because God is doing something on the inside of me. And I'm telling you, for people who walk like that, watch God. Watch God. But it may not happen immediately. Because what happened to Joseph was not immediate. But he didn't forfeit. Write this point down. When you're fractured, you don't have to forfeit. He could have forfeited not his position in Potiphar's house, because he's going to lose that. And that's where we think we forfeit. We think we forfeit in the things that man can give us. He's still going to lose his job. He did the right thing, and the wrong thing happened. And I don't know, but as I'm walking away, getting carted to jail... The thoughts, I, mean, I should have just. Oh, y'all going to act like you ain't never had a moment where you did the right thing and the wrong thing happened. And then the enemy tried. See, I told you. You should have. But he came out of this with a, with a W. Even though on earth he lost. A heavenly win with an earthly L. See, I'm trying to shift you. He got a W with God because he didn't forfeit God being with him. But he got an L in his position. Think about, we know the end of the story. He went from the pit to the head of Potiphar's house. Now I'm going to prison? What the I should have just slept with her and kept my, I should have compromised and kept my, but he didn't forfeit. Somebody say, I won't forfeit. I don't know who's making me continue to say this, but somebody says, I will not forfeit. There's stuff God has been showing you and telling you that he's going to do and you did the right thing and you still lost the job. You gave and the water still got cut off. You did it and God said, please know that I got everything under control. Ah. So what happens to him? He did the right thing. But the wrong thing happened. He got put under the prison, under the palace. So you sold me, my brothers betrayed me, got sold into slavery, and now I'm in prison for the rest of my life? Fractured. And this is the picture that many of you are trying to live, love, and give out of. If we're going to be honest, if we're not going to play fake church, 
and we're not going to act like depression and anxiety and what your family did and the trauma you've been dealing with and the reason why you always got to be first is because nobody ever picked you and like all these different things that are happening in Genesis 40, he gets thrown into prison, but he does something that I don't know if I would have the wherewithal to do. He still functions in his purpose, even in prison. If I'm in prison, I ain't talking to nobody. After all that's happened to me, all the fractures that happened to me, forget y'all. But there's a baker and a cupbearer that have these dreams and they, they start saying like, we don't know what they mean. And Joseph's like, I know what they mean. And if I was Joseph's friend, I'd be like, bro, shut up. We down here ain't, bro, do you know where we was last week? Bro, we was on top of the world. And if you would have just gave her a little bit, you know what I'm saying? We would have still, and he said, no. I'm still going to function in my purpose, even though I'm fractured and I'm now in this prison. Uh, he can say it like this. He was still being faithful. Write this point down for all my fractured people. When you're fractured, you can still be faithful. I know people sometimes coddle to the places in your area that aren't healed and give you an excuse. Yeah. But God never does. Come on. Come on. I need to talk to the person who's been evading leading that small group yeah. and writing that book and releasing that song yeah. and doing the things God has placed in your heart. But God, I wasn't expecting to lose that relationship. He said, and I know that it hurts you, but the requirement is still the same. I need you to still be faithful, even though you're fractured. But God, I wasn't expecting to lose my husband. I wasn't expecting to lose that child. I wasn't expecting to see my friend die of COVID. I wasn't expecting, and God says, and that's why I weep with you. And I bottle every tear. But the question is not, why are they gone? The real question is, why are you still here? And if you're still here, yes. there is purpose for you. Yes. And I cannot excuse you from the purpose I created you for because you are fractured right now. I need you to still be faithful even though you're fractured. He interprets the dreams for these dudes. They come to pass. And Joe makes one simple request. Hey, when y'all out there doing your, th well, you about to die, but when you, <laughs> I love how the Bible comes alive to me, like, but, but when you out there doing your thing, don't forget me. Remember me. Have you ever done something for somebody and then they, it's like they, they forgot? Like, you don't remember when we, now you had to come up, but you, okay, 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 okay. So watch where Joseph is. He's not just fractured. Watch this. He's forgotten. There's no fracture worse than being. I helped you and you forgot me. I prayed for you and you wouldn't pray for me. When I went through the same situation that your marriage went through, you talked about me? You forgot that we prayed together that God would restore your marriage? That he'd heal your kid? And as soon as my kid had an episode? It takes crazy faith to be, I feel this thing takes crazy faith to be fractured like this forgotten and still be faithful and I want to commend every person who has served God faithfully 
through your fractures. You have had the Joseph spirit. Oh, I feel this thing. That you showed up and helped and saved others and served others and prayed for others and stood for others and were an intercessor and you held other people's kids and you did the things that it was hard for you to even get out of the bed to do and you did it fractured faithful anyway God told me to stop this entire series and tell you that there is about to be. Uh, Y'all better hear me. I'm prophesying to somebody right now. And I don't know who has the ability to receive it. But if you do, lift your hands right now. There is a repayment coming. For every this. I can't do it. Nobody on earth can do it. God saw every tear. He saw every bit of pain. He saw everything you gave up. He saw the, the, the moments that you stayed diligent and faithful and God says I'm about to this is the word he gave me restore I'm about to everybody shout at me restore some of y'all lost your childhood because somebody took it away from you illegitimately God's about to restore your childhood you're about to have fun in the next 20 years of your life like you've never had before somebody is Somebody's receiving it. You're going to get joy out of things that you never thought you was going to get joy out. God is going to, everybody shout at me, restore. restore. This is what God does for Joseph. With his fractures. One day, the Pharaoh is having a dream that's tormenting him and he's like I need somebody to interpret this all the magicians and all the people they couldn't do it and the cupbearer no no was it the cupbearer yeah it's the cupbearer he finally remembers like there was a dude that was with me when I was in prison my bad bro <laughs> he says he could interpret the dream they bring Joseph up and now this is the moment where he Joseph could have been so bitter. And this is the place the enemy wants to get you to. It doesn't matter if you're fractured at the point where God wants to do unusual acceleration. He wants you to be so jaded and bitter that what's on the inside of you, you won't even give it up. Mm. There are some of y'all that's supposed to be on this platform helping us lead worship. But the last two churches you was at damaged you so bad and you are so shut down that now when God's calling for you and you feel the unction and you know God's telling you to do it. You're so bitter that it's time for unusual acceleration. And you can apply it to any situation. But Joseph still had a soft heart even though he had a hard life. And I know the world tells you, like, cover yourself, do your thing. No, no, don't no, let them in. Y'all need to stop listening to all these Instagram memes. Y'all got to stop listening to people who don't have successful relationships telling you how to be in relationships. Y'all have to stop listening to people who are unhappy with their lives but are showing you material things and think they know about everything. The Word of God is the only thing that's going to last in this earth. This man still had a soft heart, even though he had a hard life with all these fractures. He gets up and he interprets the dream. And he said, basically, this is what this means. It's going to be seven years of plenty, and then there's going to be seven years of famine. God wants you to store up for the seven years of plenty so that you'll never experience the famine. Why couldn't none of y'all tell me what he just told me? His favor. Even though he'd gone through all these different things, the favor was still on him. Uh, somebody say, the favor's still on me. That thing you had in high school, that thing you had in college, it may be buried, but the favor, 
It's still on you. If I trace back in my life, the same favor that's on me right now, it was on me in elementary school. The enemy tried to snuff it out. He tried to pervert it. He tried to make it wicked and twist it. But that same favor, it's still on me. And in one moment, he goes from the bottom of prison straight to the this is this is this is you know um prophet drake when he says started from the bottom now we're here i think i I think this is the epitome of it right here from the jail one night to second in command this man gives him a model wife and says there she go that's your wife he gets in charge over everything This is where he becomes, watch this, fulfilled. He's fulfilled. Everybody say that word, fulfilled. Fulfilled. I pray that everybody gets to the place in your life. This is not a dollar amount. This is not a status. This is something that only God can do on the inside of you. Joseph was, everybody say it, fulfilled. Fulfillment is one of the most dangerous places for believers. Because this is the place where your crazy faith can become lazy faith. Joseph is now fulfilled. He eating good every day. He's in the best place he's ever been in his whole life. And now God gives him an instruction. Because, Because Joseph was going through all of this crap, God had to take him this way. To get him in position to be in charge at a moment of pivotal transition for others. All of your fractures, all of your pits, all of your potiphers, all of everything, every prison. And even the upgrade to the palace was to get you in place for a specific time that you can be God's man or woman in position to help transition, everybody say, others. Joseph is good for the rest of his life. He don't got to do another thing. But the reason God put him there is because his heart would do the right thing for uh, I'm, I'm trying to teach you something. Write this point down. When God does something for you, he's always thinking of others. Our tendency is to think of ourselves. But any, the house God gave you was for others to be hosted and find the peace and the love. And you've been in that house you pray for and ain't nobody been over When he gave you that car and you used to walk. When he gave it to you, he was thinking of others. When God blessed you with more wardrobe, it wasn't for you to go sell it all. Let me stop. Because I know that, well, I'm being a good steward. No, 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 no. Sometimes you're not supposed to make anything off of this. You're supposed to go and take that and give it to somebody who could never afford with what you got. When he gave it to you, he was thinking of others. When he gave Bishop this church. Greenwood Christian Center was not planted for Bishop Gary and Debbie McIntosh. When he gave him the church, he was thinking of others. He was thinking of North Tulsa. He was thinking of my destiny. What would have happened if Bishop said, I don't need a church. I can just keep going on the road. He would have robbed me. When God does something for you, he's always thinking of What's the last thing he did that you thought was about you? I need us to have real evaluation. 
Joseph gets into this position and he has a decision to make. Either it starts with me or it stops with me. When God blesses you, you get a decision. When you get to the place of fulfillment, you have a decision. It either starts with me or it stops with me. Seven years goes by. They have plenty. People are bringing a portion of all of their grain and they're storing it up. Now it's time for there to be famine. And God wanted to prepare that nobody in Egypt ever experienced famine, even though it was labeled that. Do not believe in the label of the season. Because God had already given provision for what other people were calling famine. There was, there, if you believed in that label, this is the greatest time of division in the church. Don't believe that label. There's provision that God has already given to people if we wouldn't believe in the label. And this man decided it's not going to stop with me. I'm actually going to start something. And he starts distributing resources to the entire nation of Israel's and people outside. They were so blessed that they were able to sustain people who wasn't even from Egypt. God wants to know with your fractures, can he trust you? To put you in a position to be able to use what he blesses you with, to bless others with, so much so that you can begin to bless people who used to be your enemies. I, I don't, that we just, half the people are gone right now. Can, can you bring me that example of the, 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 uh, the water, please? Yeah, this is how some of your lives look. But God still called you. If it, like if, if, if nobody was around and I needed to know what color my, my hoodie was, it's still usable. There's a brown hoodie, and from here I can't see it. But when I even look into a fractured mirror, and, and honestly, I'm seeing some things in a different way. Like, hold on. There's some creativity that God is showing me in the midst of these fractures. I never would have seen it if it was perfect but it looks like the flaws is giving me a different a whole different vibe of what I thought was here because God can still use what is fractured do you know some of the most expensive art in the world is when you take broken pieces of glass and you put them in the hands of an artist or creator, he begins to form them in different ways and they call it a mosaic. God is saying to you today, with your fractures, I wanna create a masterpiece. And he told me to specifically tell everybody who has fractured faith, I see you. I'm sorry. I see you. I'm sorry. Now it's time. It's time to step out in faith again. The fracture is no longer an excuse. Because I will give you favor. I can make you faithful 
And I can make you fruitful, even if you're fractured. Today is the day where everything changes in crazy faith. When Joseph gets to this place, he has a decision to make. Write this point down. When you're fractured, you have a decision to release a flow or release a famine. Joseph is in a place in a space where God pours into him, blesses him, goes to the next level. What God's going to do for many of your life. And now God says, I bless you. What you going to do? This is now just a container that does not produce anything for anybody else. It doesn't even have the mechanism to flow. But this thing. It's something that God says, if I get it to you, if I get it to you, will you allow it to flow? Everybody say flow. flow. Joseph became a flow for the entire world. And so what did God do to Joseph? He said, oh, I'm going to take the cap off of this. Somebody shot at me, no cap. Bring me some more water from Eddie. Just give me water. If you got a water bottle out there, just start, just go, come on up here and just put it in here. What, what ended up happening? Yeah, just, just put it in there. Is God could trust Joseph with so much more? Yeah, just put it up there. Yeah, just, just go. He, because he knew that if he had it, there would be, everybody shot at me, a flow. Yeah. And so when people started to come from all over the world, God kept, Mm, pouring into Joseph. <laughs> yeah, come on, put it up there. Thank you. God kept doing it. Why? Because it would never run out. Because there it is. Now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Even when the people that created his original fracture. Come on, come on, come on. Even when he was this size. Come here, Juilliard. Come here, hold this for me. His fracture was created when he was this size. And then God raised him up to be in position to the very brothers that tried to kill him, needed him. And this is my last point. When you're fractured, you can forgive. You can forgive when you're fractured. He could have not let them boys eat anything. And he did have some back and forth. It was a little evil what he did to him. You got to read the story and just like, I'm keeping your brother and I did this. Go get your daddy. He can't come. Like it was a lot. He needed counseling. Like your position. Thank you, Juilliard. Like your position doesn't exclude you from needing therapy. You need therapy and theology. I think I need to do a series called Therapy and Theology because y'all need both of those. But Joseph, he didn't release famine on everybody, even though he could. He released a flow. Everybody say flow. It was a flow of generosity. It was a flow of, of overflow. And one of the things <clears throat> that I thought about is in that dream, God told him there would be seven years of famine. And then I'm going to allow you to be the one that releases a, a flow. Um, we're coming up on our seventh year of ministry. And God told me today, he said, Michael, I need you to do something for those who have faith that has been fractured. I need you to show them what it looks like when there's a, everybody shout at me, flow. flow. A flow of generosity. They, Joseph could have hoarded all of this stuff, but he released a flow 
on the people. And I believe as a church, that is what my assignment is to lead this church into, is a flow of generosity. And today, um, y'all know we're a generous church. Um, God spoke to me very clearly in our team, very clearly, that this year we were supposed to do something that has never been done in our church history. In a season where God has fulfilled our church. We don't need anything. When I tell you I'm standing on the same platform that I was knock need seven years ago. Saying that God told me that this church would be multi-generational. Some of y'all were here. Multi-ethnic. Multiplying and multi canvas <laughs> And everybody thought it was crazy. Until. <laughs> until it happened. And God said, Michael, in this year where I've blessed you beyond your wildest dreams. This church has bought up more property in this city. We're planning to expand into other cities. We're believing God in crazy faith. And God said, Mike. The people, not, not just your people, the people who can't give you nothing. The people who have no affiliation. The people in other denominations. The people who do organizational work that has nothing to do with what y'all doing. They need nourishment right now. After COVID, after the loss, after the after the heart, after the fractures, they just need to know that there's somebody that will turn on the faucet and allow there to be a flow. So today, if y'all ain't got nothing else to do, I'm going to take a few minutes and start the flow. Matt, they don't know what's about to happen, but some people in crazy faith. Know that when God starts to flow at Transformation Church, it becomes history in the making. So, so, so I, I heard about a few organizations. Oh, I feel this. Y'all better come get this because it's about to act. I heard about a few organizations. Number one, there's an organization called Youth Guidance that counsels and mentors students who've experienced trauma. Can somebody find them on Instagram or the interwebs and tell them there's a check for $25,000 on the way to them? Oh, and Wings of Hope, Wings of Hope International. It's an outreach to people in Haiti that does medical and food. Let them know that coming across the water is a check for $25,000. Lindsay's house. Lindsay's house, this helps with resources for single mothers overcoming addiction. $25,000 is coming to you right now. Somebody shout at me, flow. Oh, I felt that thing say flow. Bridge International. No, 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 Cornerstone Community Center. They're a ministry that distributes meals here in West Tulsa. Everybody throw up the West. <laughs> There's a check for $25,000 coming to you. So you can keep doing what you're doing during this holiday season. The Bridge International, empowering and supporting survivors of human trafficking. Think about those ladies and how they've been fractured. So what we're going to do today on behalf of God and Transformation Church, we're going to send you a check for $25,000. Check this out. The Calm Center is a safe place for youth that are experiencing crisis. 180 Ministries, which is a rehab center to support people dealing with substance abuse. Lisa's House Ministry that does temporary housing for mentorship and young adults. And Rachel's Tea House, an organization which help us, helps teens, single mothers, and their children. All y'all getting a check for $25,000. Somebody shout at me, Flo! See, when the flow starts, it starts to change something on the inside of you. 
heard about this organization right here in North Tulsa. See, one of the things that I said when I was up here is that God was going to make us a church that was multi-generational. Being a multi-generational church does not happen accidentally. It happens intentionally. And um, I just think there's something about honoring those who paved the way for you, even if you don't know how they paved the way for you. And there's a senior citizen's home here in the city, Sarah's Residential Living. And, and, and they help people 65 and up. They, I heard a story that they buried and did two funerals for the mother and the daughter. They were both up in age, did the funeral for the mother and the daughter a week apart. And they're caring for these people with limited backing. And the crazy thing about it is they make these people on fixed income still pay for housing and have to pay rent and they can't work. So Transformation Church and the team, we decided we would start a flow and start their 2020 right, 2022 right. And, and so for the first four months of the year, nobody at that senior citizen home will have to worry about their rent. We're paying up to $50,000. Y'all better help me. Somebody shout at me, flow. We are going to help them be able to live January, February, March, and April. No rent. Somebody shout at me, flow. Will y'all give God praise like God is doing something? Hey, Pastor Charles, there's hello, hello, not hello. enough for there to be a flow happening up here. I think I'm sending the flow of faith out to you. Tell me that there's come something on, happening. Come on, come on, Transformation Church, can you make some noise? The flow of faith. Oh, come on, there's a flow of faith happening. Hey, listen, we're going to keep this thing going. We're going to keep it going. Hey, listen, as a church, Pastor Michael said it, but our vision, our mission is to be a multi-ethnic, multi-generational, multiplying and multiplying and multi-campus organization. And we have seen God do that. And one of the beautiful things that God has done uh, really over the, this recent time is God has continued to expand our influence and impact, specifically in the Hispanic community. And we're actually working on some specific, come on, you can make some noise for that. Come on, we're, we're seeing God expand Hey, listen, and one of the amazing things we did is there was actually an organization we found, the Business Resource Unlimited Education Center. They provide resources for the Hispanic community in East Tulsa, and they are doing an amazing job at reaching them, impacting them, and so we had to partner with them. But I need my friend Brianna. Brianna, can you come help me? Everybody give it up for Brianna. Brianna, I need you to say, I can't say it. People think because I got a mustache and a tan that sometimes I can speak. But I, I, I need you to tell them because of the generosity of Transformation Church what is happening today. Brianna, tell them what's happening. Hoy, por la generosidad de Transformation Church, queremos anunciarles que va a llegar un cheque de 50 mil. 50 mil. 50 mil. 50,000 dollars is on the way. Para que puedan seguir impactando nuestra comunidad. Come on, Transformation Church, can you give it up? Thank you so much, Brianna. Hey, listen, we're going to keep the flow going. You're good, Brianna. Thank you. Hey, listen, there's an organization, Griffin's Promise. You guys know that our pastor, uh, Michael and Natalie, had a beautiful son, MJ, who is a miracle in motion. Can we give it up for MJ, seeing God move in his life? Listen, there are so many families who are navigating um, and parenting children with autism, and we want to come alongside them. This organization comes alongside of them, provides resources, provides help and assistance. So I need somebody to tell Gif Griffin's Promise that there's a check for $50,000 coming their way. Come on, there's a flow. We are seeing God do amazing things. Pastor Michael, I'm throwing the flow back to you. Can you take it? Oh, come Can on, somebody shout at me, flow! Flow. Now I want you to see this. None of these organizations know that they just walked into a flow. None of these people have a vested interest with us. But God has blessed us through the faithfulness and the generosity and us with our fragile selves. Still walking in. Somebody shout at me crazy faith. It allows us now to start a flow when some people could be experiencing famine. So, so, so I'm one of those people who told God, I don't want to just be impactful in the church. I want to make sure 
that we can get into the highways and byways and affect things that happen in culture. And um, a a few weeks back, there was um, a shooting in Memphis of a a rapper named Young Dolph. And uh, it was tragic. And it's just so much foolishness that's happening out here. And I started reading more into the situation and in Chicago and in Memphis and all these rap wars and gang stuff and they're killing each other and it's just foolish. It's wicked is what it is. It's evil. And um, I said, there's nothing I can do um, physically for um, young Dolph to come back except pray for his family and, and, and pray for his children that now don't have a father. But the one thing that God put on our heart and our team's heart is to find out what else is going on in Memphis to be able to impact young men and young women from a young age. And we came across this story. And I think I think y'all need to see this. Check this out real quick, okay? do better than that these babies from Memphis good job bro that baby ain't letting his stands go that's what I'm talking about this is the man that God has been using to rescue these kids 
and help them in Memphis. Um, what you're doing is beautiful. And you will never know the, the, M, the harvest on the seeds that you're sowing. And these young men, you're being a part of the solution. So we heard that there's some things that y'all need back in Memphis to make it happen. So y'all came up here and y'all did your little performance. But y'all taking a big check for $50,000 back home to be able to do. It's okay. It's okay. You can smile. He said it. What? $50,000 is going back to do it. Oh, y'all, come on, we started the flow. Yeah, 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 you can smile, dog. yeah. Can we give God praise? Thank y'all so much, bro. Somebody shout at me, flow! I just lived out one of my childhood dreams. Thank y'all so much for being out here. And uh, keep doing what you're doing. Allow God to do it in you. Amen? Amen. Let's give it up one more time for this amazing group. Okay, so um, just real quick, just so y'all um, will be able to know. Uh, she said, it's that crazy faith. <laughs> it's only crazy until it happens. But we, we're going to affect these young people's lives. But the other thing that you need to know is that there are churches that are doing amazing work out there. We don't want just people in after school programs. We want them saved. <laughs> We want their eternity transformed. And so um, there's a church in Memphis that we found. Um, I believe it's called the Church at the Well, Dr. Kia Moore. You know who that is? Well, when you go back to Memphis, tell her that there's a check. That's your pastor. Tell her there's a check for $50,000 on the way to the Church at the Well. Oh, y'all better come on. We just getting started. <laughs> I said we just getting started. <laughs> See what happens when God allows it to flow and it's just the beginning. <laughs> Somebody say start to flow. There's a collective that I, I, I heard about in Atlanta who's doing something unconventional to represent God to people who are lost. And um, it's led by this young lady named Gloria Umana and she's the visionary and creator of something called the Hope Booth. They, they literally take uh, a booth that they have um, recorded content of hope and faith and put it in the middle of places like London and New York and people come and, and they just listen to it and they start crying and God starts ministering to them and we've heard that they started a campaign to take the hope booth to a bunch of different city, cities and it would take $50,000 to or $40,000 to do it well on behalf of Transformation Church and the flow that started in crazy faith we're sending you a check for $50,000 so that you can do everything and spread hope to the entire world. Let's give God some praise right there. So, um, so hope, Memphis. Ah, uh, yeah. See, there's um that, that that sex trafficking thing. I watched a documentary um earlier this year about how foul and evil that thing is of sex trafficking and how people are groomed into that stuff. And as a church, this is one thing I want everybody to know. We can't do everything, but we can partner with people to do everything. You missed it. We've decided as a church, we can't do everything, but we can partner with people to do everything. And this is what we're going to do. So we're going to partner with A21 and we're going to give them $100,000. To keep doing what you're doing. Let's end sex trafficking around the whole world. And then one of our strongest, most consistent partners who's on the ground every time there's a tragedy and every time there's a disaster. Convoy of Hope is a partner with Transformation Church. And today, we want to just let you know there's more to come, but we're sending a check for $100,000 today to keep the flow going. Somebody shout at me, flow! Woo! Hey, um, is Evan do good here right now, Evan? Hey, Ev, come here real quick, bro. Come here.
You know I love you, man. Um, this is a young man who, uh, um, in our church, and uh, has a, a, a strong call of God on his life. Um, but but one of the things that I've been so impressed about is everything that God's blessed him with. He did what Joseph did. He, he when he did it for him, he knew it was for others. And this man has taken his calling to help the homeless community in our city and um, really put all his needs to the side to be a blessing to men and women who can't do anything for him, literally can't do anything for him. Last year, Transformation Church um, partnered with Be Heard and uh, on your crazy faith card, you wrote that you wanted a mobile shower truck so that uh, these people could take showers in dignity. Something as simple as taking a shower, which we take for granted. We mad because the water ain't hot enough, or we mad we don't got a rain shower head. And, and, and because of Transformation Church's just crazy faith and crazy generosity, um, I'm correct in saying y'all have that shower truck, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's running everywhere, right? It's running. And then somebody came and bought them a truck to pull the shower truck. So the crazy faith kept going. And, um, and now they're believing for more stuff to serve this community. And so I told the team, I was like, God's really been dealing with me about um, really finding partners that can be empowered to do what God's called them to do. So I don't know what you need right now, but the way you've stewarded over. <laughs> Y'all, I'm trying to teach you something right now. The way you've stewarded over what has been given to you and done, what you said you were going to do. Transformation Church today wants to partner with Be Heard with another $100,000. Oh, y'all can... Y'all can rejoice! Because there's a blood! Let me show you the reason why this is happening. It'll flow to you, but it's going to flow to the homeless people. But then it hit me and it was like, uh, like that's, uh, we could do that. That'd be easy. Like turn it on hundred thousand, they'll flow. But then God started speaking to me and I told, uh, I told Charles and Bree, I said, God spoke to me. He said, there are going to be some things in this next year. He's like, this is probably the last year I'm going to do it like this. He said that I'm going to show you some places that I want you to start deep generosity. And I said, what does that mean? He said, I want you to invest deep. Like, I want you to go deep. So on behalf of Transformation Church, we want to let you know that $100,000 is not just for this year. It's for the next three years. So now you can plan and now you can hire people and now you can help. Let's give God some praise. Somebody's rejoicing because you see that when the flow start up, he said, thank you, Lord. His praise wasn't for him. His praise was for who he's able to infect. Shout flow. There's a flow of faith coming to us. There's a flow. God, if you can get it to me, you can get it through me. If you can get it to me, you can get it through me. Somebody shout flow. Be Heard movement will be successful and it will expand all over the world. Be able to say that. Um, is the flow in this direction right now? Is the flow over here? Or is the flow in this direction over here? Is the flow online right now? Somebody type in flow. Pastor Charles. I think the flow is coming to you. I need a break. Come on, let somebody say flow. flow. Now listen, we're gonna flow this way, so I need you to come with me. Now, um, there's a gentleman here, I think. David, is it, are you, is your name, your name David? How you doing? Everybody give it up for David. How you doing, man, you good? I'm so glad you're here. It's nice to meet you, and this is your baby. Hello, how are you? What's your name? Elsie. Elsie, you are so cute. Hey, listen, um, 
we've heard about Blue Jay uh, House of Worship and what God has been doing that. And um, it's beautiful to see when God connects things that uh, are, are able to see what he's doing just beyond, not in a physical place, but online. I know you guys have seen things go crazy online and God blessing those things. And, uh, you know, God, that's really what he did through our house. We've seen when something blows up and then you trying to catch up and be with that. And one of the things that we wanted to make sure is that there was nothing that would keep you from being able to obey God. That there would be nothing that would stand it when it starts blowing up and everybody's calling you and everybody's saying, come do this or do this. And you're seeing crazy faith happen and miracles moving in worship. We wanted to partner with you so you could obey God and see God do incredible things. So I want you to know, because of your crazy faith and obedience, you are going home today with a check for $100,000. Thank you for everything. Oh, come on. Can you celebrate? Oh, come on. Listen, there is a flow. There is a, God is moving. Oh, come on, Transformation Church. It is God moving today. Thank you for your obedience. Thank you for your obedience. We are so grateful for you. Transformation Church, can you give it up? Hey, listen, let's keep flowing. I need you to flow. We're going to flow this way. We're going to flow out to the lobby. How are you? Come on, let's go this way. Let's go this way. Come on, people, watch out. I feel like Oprah. Can I just throw a, uh, I just feel like there's something. Let's go out here. Somebody say flow. Oh, come on. Somebody say flow. All right, listen, we're going out here. One of the amazing things that God is doing is he continues to expand um, his message going out. That's the thing you need to know is God always, God always, always. Some, somebody say God always. God always. God always provides where there is vision. God gives provision where there's vision. And one of the things that God has done is expand our church, not just to be um, in America, but around the world. Around the world, there are people being impacted and changed. Um, and uh, can you bring me that, Joe, real quick? Just that piece of paper real quick. Is Carlisha here? Carlisha is here. Okay, first, I'm going to do this one. Carlisha Williams. Is this Carly? Carlisha, come here, Carlisha. Give it up for Carlisha. You look beautiful, by the way. How are you today? Are you well? Listen, we have heard about what you're doing and the impact you're making. Um, and uh, what is the name of your organization? Tell everybody the name. Women Empowering Nations. Women Empowering Nations. And come on. Um, and we have seen the impact that you have had of, of going and giving education and helping with literacy in Africa. And uh, we wanted to partner with you today. And so because, again, of your faith and the faith of Transformation Church, you're going home today with a check for $50,000 for Women Empowering Nations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Can you give it up for women empowering nations? Oh, come on. There's a flow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, listen, the flow is still going. I'm going to invite my friend Jennifer. Can you come with? Hello. Everybody give it up for Jennifer here. Now, Asking for the Nation has been something we've partnered. We partnered with you last year, and you guys were building. What were you building last year? You're building a school. Is that correct? A vocational school and so there's been progress in that right like the huge, huge progress bamboo season she said well hey listen again this is a part of us partnering with you guys and seeing the mission go forward in the flow of faith and so uh today we want to partner with you and give asking for the nations a check for a hundred thousand dollars to keep the flow going oh come on transformation church to keep the flow going Come on, Pastor, we're throwing it back to you. The flow is still going. Come on, Transformation Church. Let's my, give God praise. Y'all, my, uh, my cheeks. Y'all know when you smile so much and then it starts, then you, ah, uh, like. But what do you think God is doing right now? To see that because of the faith and generosity of people, from all over the world that came together under this banner of Transformation Church that there could be a flow. Um, I truly believe that the local church, y'all sit down because y'all going to be standing up here in a minute for a long time. I said we just getting started. <laughs> Some of y'all didn't believe me. <laughs> Tony, they don't... Oh, y'all want the flow to stop right now? Y'all ready to go home? Like... Okay, I just wanted to make sure that we, everybody say flow. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, you might want to tell everybody to turn on because you don't know who in Transformation Nation that this flow is not relegated to this room. I'm telling you right now, the blessings is about to everybody say flow. flow. Yeah. Um, thank you, Lord. This is 19 inches from the ground. This platform that I'm on right now, 19 inches from the ground. It's not a huge stage. This was the very stage that I cried and prayed on the altar that God would bless our church to be able to bless others. And it's this, on this very platform I stood up in the first month of me pastor and said, we're going to raise an offering today to give it all away. This is where the flow started. The flow didn't start when people started finding out about Mike Todd or Transformation Church. No, no, no. The flow started when we said, all right, with the room not even full, let's give in crazy faith. Didn't even have that language. I think we was expect effect or something like that. And it got refined. You know what I'm saying? Heart for the kingdom. That's what we called it. And we gave $8,300. All of us coming together, 83. And that next month, we gave it all away. What's happened so far in this room has been over a million dollars. Like, I know, I know you don't count. Like, it's like 50, 25, 25, 25, 25. That was a lot of 25. And then you're like 50, then 100. And it's been over a million dollars, and we just get started. Now, now I, want, I want you to see that, that, that God can take you with all of your fragments with all of your fragility and he can allow you to be somebody that is a part of providing a flow for a transformation nation if you've ever given a dollar to this thing you can stand and say today it is more blessed to give the tears that people are crying right now for the boys in Memphis and the, the people that are in the building and at home right now. You, the, the reason you feel that joy welling up in you is because that's your obedience to God mixed with my obedience to God mixed with their obedience to God creating a flow for other people. And we may never get to see on this side of heaven the impact of our collective faith. But I promise you, we are changing the world because of your faith. Somebody say your faith. Uh, so I got to go to churches because I really do believe that churches are the hope of the world. I believe that God set up his local church, like the coming together of believers. And during COVID, a lot of people have experienced so much loss and so much tragedy. People stopped coming to the church or they found another church and now they're online and they're not... And people are just trying to obey the call, the call of God. But with limited resources and not having enough. We heard about a church, City Church in Stewart, Florida. Pastor Richardo Weaver, I believe his name is. Their air conditioning for their building went out. They in Florida with no air? They need live stream equipment. Their multimedia system to stream because a lot of their people, they need to do that. Can somebody go to Florida and tell them that a check for $25,000 is on the way right now? And while you're at it, can you go to Kingdom on Earth in Hazel Park, Michigan, Pastor Shelby and Bianca Hunter? There's a check for $25,000 coming to you right now. Too. Oh, come on, church. Let's give God some praise. Um, Pastor Charles, I think you found some other churches that needed the flow to start all over the USA. Can you tell me what those churches are that need that flow of faith? Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, listen, the flow of faith is still going. We have found churches all over the world, and we believe that the local church is the hope of the world. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to find Compassion Life Church, Pastor Jesse and Crystal Moses, and tell them that there's a check for $50,000 on the way. Come on! Hey, listen. Hey, listen. I need you to go to Stockton, California and find West Coast Church. Bishop Mark Filkey and Jordana Filkey, I need you to know there's a check for $50,000.
Oh, come on, y'all. This is, this is us being generous to the church. I need you to find Truth City Church. Pastors Khalid Forbes and Chris Forbes in, in, uh, in Hatesville, Maryland. I need you to tell them there's a check for $50,000. Here's what I need you. I need you to find No Walls Church in Wintergreen, Florida. Pastor Stephen Gage says 50% of their community does not identify with church affiliation. They are representing. They are going into spaces, the lost and the found. This, we're not just building a Christian club. We're seeing lives transform. Can you tell them there's a check for $50,000 on the way? This is what the church is about. There is a flow, and Pastor, we're going to keep it going. I'm going to throw it back to you for the flow to keep moving in the church. Let's do it. So there's a church here in our, our city um, that I talked about a couple weeks ago um, that lost their pastor. Um, it, it's a church called Jubilee Church. Uh, out in, uh, um, oh, man, I, I just hit my heart again. I know exactly who it is. I just remember being in the back of that van and him encouraging me, Pastor Sears. Um, I think there's somebody from his family or the church. Where are they at? Or any of this here? Y'all come up here. All y'all. Come here. Um, will y'all give it up? This family. Uh, they're still being faithful right now. Even though they're fractured. Come on, help them up. I need y'all to help right now. We're giving them encouragement right now. Come on. I've known these uh, beautiful young ladies in this family for pretty much my whole life. Um, Andy, I love you, man. Uh, Andy uh, is a musician, and I remember coming over to y'all church, and Mama would start singing, We Declare Your Glory. And these three white girls on the back, Declare Your Glory. They y'all, they can sing, sing. I'm not even playing. They can all blow. And Andy is a beast on the guitar. Kirk is a beast on the bass. This is, I mean, we, y'all lost your father, but the city lost a pillar. And um, though he didn't have a huge church, he made a huge impact. And last week we talked about having a legacy of faith. And the greatest thing about what your dad did, he put in all of y'all. And so this legacy gets to go on. I asked them like, so what's happening with the church and what's going on? And they said, them kids about to keep that thing going and they gonna see what God wants to happen. And so because of the seeds that your father sowed into this city, into my life, into Natalie's life, into this church, it's harvest time for your church on seeds that you didn't even sow. So I want you to go back to your church and let them know that you're coming back with $100,000 to be, to be able to do whatever God has called you to do. It's time for a flow. Can we give God? Thank you so much, brother. We love you, bro. And this is our commitment to you. We're here. It's not just money. It's, it's whatever we got. And this is what the church looks like as we stand and we love and it's not your church against my church and your click against my click and this we gotta quit all of this territorial isn't it one kingdom of god okay and these white people got soul too y'all y'all don't even let them don't let them play you don't let them play you thank you for what you're doing we want to tell you to keep doing what you want. And we're going to see mom and dad's legacy go on for years to come. A legacy of faith. Can we give God a great shout of praise? We love y'all. We love you. We love you. Appreciate you. Somebody shout at me, Flo. Thank you guys so much. Um, but we're not done there. Um, I heard about a church in um, Michigan. All right. Uh, I heard about a church in Michigan, um, Journey Ministries. And um, I heard, you know, because so much of our ministry is done online and, and having to stream and do all this other stuff. I heard about this church who basically the pastor, the worship leader, and uh, I think their 
tech guy have all been streaming their services on Facebook from their cell phones. That's the only thing through the pandemic, through everything, they have been faithful and they've just been using their cell phones. And you know, I don't know how that works because like, if you get a call, does it like, does everybody not get to, or if like, you know, what happens if somebody texts you? Does everybody get to read the text? I don't really know what happens. And I just feel like that's not the best way to be able to do it. And for those people being faithful to use what they had, see around here we have a saying, all you have is, see a lot of people because they were fractured in their ability to get equipment, they would have stopped. But these people kept doing it with what they had. And so because of that, I wanted to let them know there's three new iPhone 13s on the way to all, see it's the little things. Y'all can use those other phones to be able to stream service and y'all got three new iPhone 13s headed to Michigan right now. But we didn't think that was enough. You got $100,000 to get brand new equipment as well. Oh, y'all better, come on. Somebody shout at me, Flo. This is the church. Oh, I felt that. This is the church of Jesus Christ. This is the day that everything switches. We don't need a handout. We'll be the answer to your prayer. See, I start getting ignorant right here because when in my Bible, when I read that he gave Adam and Eve the ability to rule, subdue, and dominate on the earth. And for some reason, we've taken a step back from that and, and started looking for God to do it in other people and maybe we'll just be the recipient. If you don't want to be a part of making a difference, go somewhere else. But our crazy faith is that for the rest of this church's existence, this will be a place of somebody shot at me, a flow. There will be more than enough. I'm prophesying it right now, recording. There will be more than enough at this place forever so that we can always be a distribution house of what God wants to do. Somebody shout at me, Flo. And there's nothing he does for this house that he does not want duplicated in your house. See, some of y'all thought this was Transformation Church. This is a miracle. And the miracles and signs are for the unbelievers. And unbelievers can be in church. And uh, y'all missed it. And some of y'all, by the end of this, your faith is going to, you gonna be able to give away a car. You gonna be able to give away a house. You're going to somebody shout at me, Flo. I feel that. Uh, Metropolitan, UMC. Oh, that means that's a church that ain't even the same denomination as us. Is that a United Methodist Church? Well, pastor, we don't agree on Dodger. It don't matter. We're going to connect on the things that we do agree on. And we're going to help you continue to help people. Because this is a place of, everybody shout at me, flow. <laughs> There's a flow of faith here. And so, um, will somebody find um, Metro Metropolitan United Methodist Church in Montgomery, Alabama, Pastor Richard Williams, because they have a GED program that, that they need laptops for. So tell them that we're sending them, oh, oh, and they have a food pantry that they feed the community. And we was like, how much do that cost? Ah, it doesn't matter. We're sending you a check for $100,000 to be able to do whatever you need to do to continue to serve that community. Somebody shout at me, Flo! Christian Life Church in Tinley Park, Illinois. Jerry and Chris McQuay. They're serving youth in that area and doing major things for impact. Will somebody uh, 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 drive over to their church today or hit them on the text message? Somebody in trans. Is there anybody from Illinois, Chicago, in Transformation Nation? Okay, the drummer must be from Chicago. Okay. <laughs> Live in Tulsa now, calm down. <laughs> well, well, text somebody, Tony, and let them know that we're sending $100,000 to Christian Life Church to be able to help them. Um, there's a church located in Deerfield Beach, Florida, and the pastors are sitting right here on the front row. Didn't know that you would be here today, but God did. And so I want to let you know, oh yeah, yeah, I'm just going to come and tell you. I'm going to come, where that camera right there? I'm going to go ahead and tell you, didn't know you was going to be here. Will y'all stand up? Y'all have served faithfully. And God is about to do a bamboo season in your life right now.
So you're going home with a check for $100,000 to go ahead and do what God has called you to do. Go back there and tell Jesus people proclaim that God is doing a miracle and there is a flow of faith. Somebody shout at me, flow! You don't know that you're sitting in a place. They didn't know. They were sitting in a place where provision had already been made. I declare that over somebody's life right now. You're going to find yourself in a place and provision is already going to be made. There's a flow. Hey. There's a flow. Somebody help me say that. There's a flow. There's a flow. Hey. I feel it come. There's a flow. Woo! And there's a flow. Um, there's a church that is starting up in Atlanta next year. It's called Live Church. Pastor Mayo and Kai Sewell. And um, um, I know what it is to, to pioneer something from, 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 from a place that you didn't didn't really have all the resources so we want you to start in a better position than, than a lot of people do so um for the church that hasn't started yet that is starting next year there's a check from transformation church and transformation nation for a hundred thousand dollars on the way to atlanta right now audacity church um is the pastors here? Is somebody in here from Audacity Church? Uh, uh, come here. It's hard to get pastors from their church on Sunday, but this Transformation Church team is, they, they cold in it. Y'all come on up here. I've never met these people in my whole life. You guys look very beautiful. What's your name? Ashley, and what's your name, sir? Ronnie, the swag is impeccable today. I, I see what you did there. Um, so I heard there was some crazy accident that happened at the church, basically, that lightning struck and y'all had equipment and all that other stuff. And basically it fried all of y'all's equipment, like cameras, lights, lights speakers, mics. mics, and y'all just been faithful, still meeting, still proclaiming Jesus. I don't even know how this story came to my team. But what we want to let you know is you can go buy all new mics, go buy all new cameras, go buy all new sound. You're going home today with a check for $100,000. Oh, I need Transformation Church to rejoice. I know what it is to be where you are and God sees you. No strings attached. There's no meetings you have to come to. This is God seeing you. Go back and tell your church that God is faithful and there is a flow. Can we give God? A, this is somebody right here in the city, y'all. There's a flow. Whee! Boy, that's something. There's a flow. Y'all better quit. I got, we still just getting started. There's a flow. There's a flow. I gotta stop and say this. Okay, I gotta stop and say this. It's not a flow from Transformation Church. It's a flow through Transformation Church. But it's a flow from God. And I need everybody to hear me say this. God is the source. We are a resource. So when I say there's a flow, you're not looking, it's transformation. There are people, God is changing your situation right now. As you're believing in crazy faith, that God can do it, not transformation. We can't do everything for everybody. This is just a, a little taste of what our God, who knows everything, has everything, is everywhere, wants to do in your life. So I want to encourage you that there's a flow, there's a flow. 
Lift your hands. There's a flow. God, whatever you want to do, however you want to do it through me to you, Father God, there's a flow. There's a flow. Yikes, 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 yikes. Okay. So, uh, Audacity Church, Pastor Ronnie and Ashley, you're here in Tulsa. And I just said, you know, a lot of people in Tulsa, um, when it comes to church, it's kind of like, are you with this camp? Are you with that camp? Are you with this camp? Are you with that camp? And I just want to let everybody know I'm with all the camps. Like, I, I, will be, I, I will be at everybody's church and everybody's thing. I'll show up at the Kojic church and then I'll go to, like, y'all, because I really believe in the kingdom of God. And so you were the first church from Tulsa we wanted to bless. But anybody that's watching, will y'all go tell Pastor Alex Hamaya and the Church of the Battle Creek there's a check for $100,000 from Transformation Church? And then go tell Pastor Paul Doherty and Ashley at Victory there's a check for $100,000. Then go tell Pastor Matt Nelson over at City Church that there's a check for $100,000 to help with their new building. Y'all too loud, I can't scream that. I can't scream that hard. So Battle Creek Victory. And then we go to City Church. They're building a new building. $100,000. Put it to whatever you need to do. And then there's a church in Owasso. Um, Presence Theater. Pastor Alvin Fruge. There's $100,000 coming to Presence Theater right now. And then go over there to um, Pastor Whit George over at Church on the Move and tell him there's $100,000. Coming to the, this one is special to me because um, when we were in our second year of um, pastoring, um, Church on the Move sent a $20,000 check to us. And you, that might as well have been $2 million. When we were sitting here believing God every week and they came and filmed something and Pastor Witt blessed us and uh, they sold seed into good ground when nobody even knew about Transformation Church. And today, Transformation Church and Transformation Nation, we get to sow it back into them, multiply, press down, shaking together and running over. Church on the Move, thank you for your faithfulness in the city. Thank you for what you do. $100,000 is on the way. Somebody shout at me, flow! There's a flow of faith. So um, I told y'all a little earlier, y'all bring it all the way down because I'm I will stay there. Y'all pushing me. Um, y'all sit down. I can't. If you have to leave, bye. But there's a, the flow's still going. Now, if y'all want to stop the flow, we can stop the flow. Stop the flow? In the chat, stop the flow? Okay, I just wanted to make sure we was good. To, okay. Um, there, there, was a, there was a church. It's a flow of faith. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you know how much faith it took for seven years for those people to bring a portion of what they accumulated and store it. It took faith for them to listen to it. No, no, it was crazy for them to listen to Joseph's instructions based off a dream our, our Pharaoh had. This what y'all want to base it on? Where are the facts? All we know is that God gave him a dream. It was interpreted and we have to obey. But that faith Produce a flow. Um, there was a church here in the city that we owned. And um, a few weeks ago, in the middle of the message, I uh, just gave it away. Like, <laughs> it sounds crazy, but like, it was just, the Holy Spirit was like, they just bought it from y'all for almost a half a million dollars. Give them all the money back. Now that, you know, God, like, can we have a meeting on the side real quick? <laughs> Fiscally, that's, you know, you try to start like, he said, give it back to him. I had no idea that this, this Asian church would, was following God in crazy faith. 
And our team said, I just want you to see what happened and how God would speak to somebody and how they would obey God in crazy faith. Pastor Kim was able to just tell us a little bit. It was so, it, it was extensive what we got. I'm only wanted to show y'all this clip to let you know that somebody that don't even speak the language you speak is still walking in faith that you're walking in. Listen to Pastor Kim's crazy faith story. Uh, hi, my name is John Kim. Uh, this is my beautiful wife, my better half. My better half. We are pastoring together of Flame of Love Church. Flame of Love Church is one of the Korean churches in Tulsa. God gave me an order and vision to start a new church. I thought, yes, I can do it. I could do anything because God is with me. God is my church. But from that time, uh, God didn't give me any order, any words at all for first three years. I felt very lonely, outcasted. I felt like in the wilderness. I said like this, God, are you there? God, are you there? Why did you give me the order? Pastor Kim jong Su, start a new church. If you, you said so, give me any evidence or give me any guidance. But since that time, you didn't give me any answer, any kind of, it, it looked like at that moment, God turned his back on me. Finally, for the first time, <laughs> when I started the church, God gave me the answer. Pastor Kim, jong Su. I know there are lots of very big and very good churches around all the world. But don't forget this, jong Su. I am watching over you. I am watching over your church with my dream. Even though you look like very small sprout, I know there are lots of very big trees, but I am watching over your the very small seed, small sprout. That's why don't worry. Uh, when I received the word of God, I said, if you say so, if you say so, no complaint at all, no fear at all. Okay, I keep going. Even though if you are not saying to me anymore, it's okay. I keep going. God, if you say so, if you don't speak another word to me, I'll keep going. And when we gave that church the news that they no longer have to worry about a mortgage on the building they bought less than 60 days ago. We sold $400,000 into them so they could do ministry without the burden. Transformation Nation, that's because of your crazy faith. Can we give God a shout of praise right there? And if you talk about um, people who have been faithful and said, God, if, if you say so, um, James talks about taking care of the widow and the orphan and how this is ministry that God never finds any fault with. And um, there's a ministry in Texas where um, there's been some really challenging things that happen at this ministry. And this um, young lady has pioneered for years, decades, of keeping this ministry and church going, giving away her salary, doing all these different things. And... Uh, I was able to get her in service. We had the Connor to get her here. Um, I went to Dallas on Monday. Was I in Dallas on Monday? And I was sitting there like, please come to church on Sunday. Would you please come to church on Sunday? She's like, I got a church of my own. And this and that and the third, the fourth, the fifth. God wanted to bring you here to honor you. And uh, I was like, bring the camera. Somebody follow me. 
um, it's been a lot of years of you having to be faithful when nobody saw. That glass up there looked like your heart. But God's saying today, he's about to use you, heal you, transform the future. And God wanted you to come here today so that you could be the recipient of a $100,000 check to take back to Destiny Point Church. Oh, y'all, I need y'all to give God some credit. To relieve some of the pain and the pressure. She's been doing this all by herself for over 15 years. 18 years? 18 years being faithful. And God can still use you. I just want you to hear me say that God can still use you. With all that has happened, the best days for your life, Pastor Renee, and Destiny Point is right in front of you. If you believe it in crazy faith, will y'all help give God some praise? Oh, come on. I said, let's give God some praise. Okay, so, um, so, uh, I think y'all done? Okay, I just wanted to make sure y'all can go whenever you need to. All right, so we're going we gonna to flow because y'all told me I could go. Okay. Um, so um, the word for 2021 is what? Anger. What's the word for this year? Anger. So I found a church who the name of their church is Anchor Church. And I was like, oh, shoot. If, I mean, maybe next year we couldn't have done it. But this year... So to Anchor Church, Pastor Sean and Theresa Blakeney in Florida, there's a check for $100,000 on the way to Anchor Church so you can continue to do ministry at a high level. Y'all getting tired on me? Y'all done rejoicing with other people? Imagine if 100000 was coming to... How about... So I heard about this church plant in Colorado Springs, Colorado, called Zeal Church. Like, and I don't know a whole bunch about them, but I saw their pastor, Brandon, I believe. And, and I was like, so I had somebody get a FaceTime number for me. And I don't know, we might show up in a service right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and FaceTime whoever's on this phone. Ooh, Holy Spirit. Well, whatever you gonna do. Come on, pick up this one you want to pick up. You want to pick this one up. Even if you preach and pick it up. Ooh, somebody text somebody. They're going to want this call. Ooh, that's too many rings. Ooh. I got to call again. All right, I just, you know what I'm saying? It's a live service, so I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Father, in the name of Jesus, let somebody at Zeal Church have the unction. In the name of the Father, the Son. Somebody, somebody need to pray. You got somebody on the phone? Is that somebody from Zeal Church? Zeal Church, you at Zeal Church? Okay, you, okay. So, so is where the pastor at? Get the pastor. So get the pastor. Tell him to pick up the phone. Run and get the, this is live. He, he running, y'all. Look at him, he running. This brother, he said, Pastor! Get the pastor on the phone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it again right here. I'll try it one more time. Pastor Brandon, can, can you hear me? Okay, there's somebody to answer the phone. Okay, there's a phone. Hey, go, is that Pastor Brandon? That's you. Okay, you on two phones now. God bless you. I'm on multiple phones. All right, Pastor Brandon, how you doing? Transformation Church is Pastor Brandon. Right off Transformation Church. Listen, we just had church. I can't believe that. We're just in the glory over here. What's up? Oh, okay, so I'm calling you in the middle of service. Is this your beautiful wife? It is. What's your name? She got that next level smile, that crest, that airport, American Airlines smile. I see that. Okay, so we're in the middle of church and um, 
we have started this thing of crazy faith and giving in crazy faith. And um, we heard that you guys have just been pioneering and moving in Colorado Springs to really help bring transformation to so many people. Your church has exploded. Yes. You guys are believing God for a building or something like that right now. Can you tell me yes. just a little bit about that? Yeah, we are looking for permanent location. We are up to three services, packed out a year and three months old, over 1,100 people coming, salvations, healings, but we need a home. And so we are saving up to, uh, to, to make an offer. As soon as the Lord, we've been looking at places, and so we're just believing God, His timing, His provision. So that's the big deal. You said timing and provision. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I like both of them words. Um, so what I'm trying to figure out is how much you believe in God for? We are believing God. We are believing God for exactly a down payment. We've been working with our realtors. So we need a down payment of $1 million. That's uh -huh. what we're believing God for over this you know, next time place so we can make that down payment and be ready to move in. So, so I heard that you guys had a miracle offering or some type of uh, offering to, to give for people to exercise their crazy faith. Was that today or last week or it's so coming it's up? So it's our legacy so the offerings that we have been preparing and people have been giving towards. And so up to this point, we've raised about $65,000. So we're just towards that, but we're going to be giving in an intentional way in January. In January. Okay, so this yeah. is what I want you to tell Zill Church. Uh, on behalf of Transformation Church and Transformation Nation and the people all around the world that are believing in crazy faith with you guys, there's a check for $500,000 on the line. <laughs> a half a million dollars on the way to Zeal Church. Me and my wife Natalie know what exactly what it feels like to be in your position, to go from one service to five services, to try to create a multi-ethnic ministry. We see the same grace that's on our lives, on your ministry. And we declare this is a bamboo season for Zeal Church. We declare that God is about to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. And we just wanted to sow into good grounds. Right now, there is a check with no strings attached. This is my first time ever meeting y'all. For $500,000, y'all give God praise. Transformation Church, this must be God, give God a shout of praise. Oh, is that the best you got? I love you. I'm going to get your number, and I'll talk to y'all later. Somebody take this phone. Somebody take this phone. Because we're not done yet. Uh-huh. If your faith ain't stirred yet, if you're waiting for something else to happen right now, Shout at me, flow! Yeah. That actually worked. That's awesome. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for all the people that will be changed in Colorado Springs because of Zeal Church. Thank you, Father, for the marriages that will be restored. Thank you, Father, for the people who will be broken from addiction. Thank you, Father God, for all of the young people who will stop cutting and find community. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for a flow. We're going to go across the waters to Jabula Ministries International, Pastor Tudor Bismarck, somebody that has been intricate in foundations of my faith. Somebody tell Pastor Tudor there's a check for $100,000 on the way to Jabula New Life Ministries. And then Pastor Tasha and um, Kenneth Leonard. Um, some of y'all know Tasha because she's a gospel singer. But God called them to start a church. And everybody doesn't realize that when you're successful in one thing, it doesn't automatically transfer <laughs> into another thing. 
You have to pay your dues and till the ground. And somebody told me that they were paying for everything with that church out of pocket. I said, the devil is a liar. They said, well, we're in a little town in South Carolina. And I said, and God's about to create a flow there. So on behalf of Transformation Church and Transformation Nation, and, 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 and really in obedience to God, there's a check for $100,000 coming to the purpose place. Oh, y'all got it. Y'all got it. Y'all better keep this energy. And after you go to South Carolina, Catch a flight over to Las Vegas and tell Pastor Jabin Chavez at City Light Church that there's a $100,000 check coming for them to help them continue to do what God's called them to do. And then get on a train and go to Pontiac, Illinois and find Pastor Sean Jensen and Authentic Church and tell them, y'all listen, I saw the video. There, there, there's the team has done such a good job at finding these people and praying over it and trying to see who God wants us to give to and, and we saw this church and the church the pastor got up two weeks ago and said y'all in generosity last year we gave $21,000 and the church went crazy and God said they have rejoiced over just a fraction of what I'm about to release on them so will y'all please tell everybody at Authentic Church that an authentic check is coming for $100,000 for y'all to continue? Oh, y'all better keep doing what God's called you to do. And then I got some friends in Dallas, Texas that started a church called Social Dallas. They're less than a year old and they're packing out arenas, Pastor Robert and Taylor Madhu. We know God's doing crazy things there, but you need some crazy money to continue to facilitate. So there's a check for $100,000 on the way to Dallas for you to continue to do what God has called you to do. This is the season of no cap. Somebody say no cap. No cap. And then in Miami, Florida, there's a church called Good Life Church. Pastor Marcus Gonzalez, there is a check for $50,000 on the way to your church right now so you can continue to do what God has called you to do. Okay, this one feels, this one feels personal. This is special because um, I found this church. I don't know if y'all got any pictures that y'all can show. If not, put it in post. But there's a church in Canada, Calgary, Canada, called Connect Church. And this church was impacted by crazy faith so much that they literally took everything. The branding, the logos, the, the... I love it. See, church people, well, that's mine. Y'all, you biting off of Paul and Luke and Mark. There ain't nothing original. Stop acting God gave me a word. You read that out of... This is what the church should look like. If something impacts you and transforms your life, you should be able to recycle that and give it to people so it transforms. I'm saying this publicly. If I ever preach a message that impacts your life and you're a pastor or a leader, steal all of it. God gave you eyes plagiarize take it off I just asked you to do it better than I did it like help people get free I hate this thing in church that doc it's me bro shut up oh excuse me I need therapy still but I saw this church they took the branding they did everything and they've been giving to people in Canada and this year, this church raised $104,217.31 and gave it away. Oh, y'all can do better than that. Do you know what it takes for a church to do that? So, I know we've been giving away 100000 And I don't want to, like, break the flow. But they put an exact number up there. So on behalf of God, Transformation Church, and Transformation Nation, there's a check for exactly double what y'all gave away coming to you. $208,434 is on its way to Canada 
for you to keep walking, living, moving, giving in crazy faith. Will somebody shout unto God with the voice of triumph? Shout at me, flow! Hey, Pastor Charles. Hello, I think hello. the flow needs to come to you. <laughs> hey, listen, the flow is continuing to go is continuing to flow and you know one of the things that I love is when God calls you to an area he doesn't ask you to go to that area and not everything around you be blessed like we, we just learned about it today Joseph when he went to the palace the palace got blessed by the way and as we moved from 1519 into our new location in Bixby we wanted to make sure that we are a blessing to Bixby so Bixby, Bixby Public Schools all the kids in Bixby we're sending a check for $25,000 to Bixby Public Public schools. Hey, listen, the Bixby Outreach Center that serves that community so well and connecting with them, providing meals for them during the holidays. Let the Bixby Outreach Center know there's a check for $25,000 on the way. Listen, I want to encourage everybody watching. There are people you may never meet people you may never talk to but when your obedience when you obey God when you give your five dollars your fifty dollars there are people at the Bixby Outreach Center that will receive a meal because you gave money and obey God somebody shout at me flow, flow. pastor Michael let's keep the flow going back to you sir so, so, so you was in you was in South Tulsa where our current location is but today we in North Tulsa and one of the things that we made a commitment to is when we had to move out of this location, we would never move our presence out of helping this community. And so um, we, we've been doing that all along the way, stuff that y'all don't know, stuff that only people know, but we're going to continue that today. So I needed to bless, uh, uh, on behalf of Transformation Church and, and Transformation Nation, a couple of churches in North Tulsa as we are at the precipice of it being a hundred years since the Tulsa Race Massacre, and this community is still feeling the effects of what happened. We, as the church, decided back in June that if nobody was going to give reparations, the church would be the ones to do it. And so we gave $200,000 to to each one of the survivors we bless different organizations but we said we got to keep this thing going so there's a church literally in running distance from here morning star baptist church pastor rodney G G goss i want y'all to tell pastor rodney somebody when we leave here just roll past morning star and tell them that we're gonna drop off a check for fifty thousand dollars to morning star and then after you do that, will you go up the hill to Apache and go get Pastor Ray Owens over at Metropolitan Baptist Church and tell him there's a check for $100,000? Come on, um, $100,000 to the Met. Because we're one church, same team, kingdom of God. And we know it can't just happen on Sunday mornings. But transformation, everybody say transformation. You know, I like that. Uh, that has to happen all throughout the week. And God has given people the, the audacity to believe God in education. And we heard about this academy called Solid Foundation. And they're nurturing academic excellence for tomorrow's leaders. And they're doing it um, with not a lot of support. So on behalf of Transformation Church, we're sending you a check for $25,000 to keep doing what God's doing there. And uh, is Ramal Brown here? Ramal, where are you at? Is, are you here? Is he here? Tell him to hurry up. Hurry up. So Ramal, I've known him, and he's done so many things for the young people in North Tulsa for years, being somebody who, who is a person. Y'all give it up for Ramal right now. I love you, my friend. Look at the whole family. How y'all doing? What's up, boss? You good? So um, this family has invested their lives into helping underprivileged people in North Tulsa. And one of the things that Ramal did is started a radio station called The Juice Radio that he's been doing literally by himself funding it. I went in there one time, the equipment from his own house and studio, and, and, and it's been a family ministry. So we just wanted to tell you that we believe in how you believe in the young people in this community, even when nobody supports. So today y'all going home with a check for $30,000 to continue to continue doing. Come on, that's a hug of faithfulness that God, y'all gotta, y'all better rejoice. You don't even know 
to God be, you see his response is worship. What happens when God makes a crazy way? You just gotta worship. Well, what does radio have to do with it? You don't know whose life will be snatched out of darkness just because they're occupied with a man and woman of God. Thank you for what you're doing, brother. God bless you. Will y'all give it up for Brother Ramal? All right. And then we partnered earlier this year with a grocery store called the Oasis Grocery Store. First time in 14 years that they have had fresh groceries in a food desert of North Tulsa. And we did something earlier in the year, but we just said, this is their first year, it's not enough. So can somebody tell AJ and the whole management team over there that we're partnering again with them for another $100,000 <laughs> at Oasis to feed the community? Oh, we're gonna feed the community with this. People gonna get Christmas meals. They're gonna be able to, when their kids are out of school for break, they're gonna be able to feed them. Somebody shout at me, Flo! So, um, are we done in North Tulsa? Nope! <laughs> um, I just, I think this one I want to take even above just North Tulsa, and I just want to talk about um, injustice. And I know this is where people don't touch because it gets touchy and da 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 Okay, cool. There has been a stronghold over this city and other cities yes. of segregation right. and um, just injustice. Yeah. I'm just going, without going into it, it's just been injustice. And there's still things that have not happened for North Tulsa, and it's happening all over the rest of the city. We're building out and this and that and the third, the fourth, the fifth. And it's not just happening in Tulsa, it's happening everywhere. God's gonna raise this church up to end that crap. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm saying it out loud now because when we build whole communities and give people year free of rent to be like when we I'm telling y'all there's going to be stuff mark my words I, <laughs> if you've been around here long enough you know this is we're going to own banks we're going to give people loans at rates that would realtor companies we came to transform I thought we've been talking about seeing it before you see it I thought we've been in 12 weeks of crazier faith I don't know what happened to the church but we're not shouting about a house we're shouting about a community of houses We're talking about teaching people how to steward and leave wills. We're not just trying to start a GoFundMe to pray for somebody's funeral. We're talking about generational wealth. We're talking about that's the vision God gave Bishop. Thank you, Lord. And it went from local to national. And I don't know if y'all remember us praying a few weeks back for Julius Jones. That was on death row. And uh, the only thing I'd like to say is the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous. They avail much. They were supposed to kill that young man. And he's still alive. Now, there's a far way to go. But some of y'all don't rejoice for it. For <laughs> he's still here. And I know we, we want the rest of it. But we thank God for the progression, not perfection. His mother and his sister for 22 years have been fighting. I don't know what it must feel like to wake up and go to sleep every day fighting. But we just want there to be some relief for that mama and that, and that sister. So on behalf of Transformation Church, we're sending $100,000 to you guys through justice for Julius. And we pray that God blesses you for all of the standing in the gap that you've done and all the praying and the rallying and all the sleepless nights, that this would be the beginning of restoration for you. That everything that the canker worm has stolen, 
God would give it back. Somebody say flow. flow. All right. I got to move through this. They said 25 minutes. All right. Uh, I'm prepared for more blessing than that. I, got, I thought I, I can stop though. We can stop it. But we can, okay. Somebody shot at me flow. All right. So um, one of the things that I've, I've seen happen over this last season, especially in COVID, is that the people um, have lost a lot of loved ones, but people have been dealing with um, medical situations that are unlike anything that you could imagine. And uh, we heard uh, about a young lady um, who was diagnosed with scoliosis. Um, she has a 40 degree curve in her back. And her mom wrote a crazy faith card and said, I have crazy faith that I'll be able to send my daughter to muscle and brain boot camp. I don't know how we would be able to do it, but it costs $8,200 to try to just help her in her brain function and her back. When the team showed me Anaya's story, I said, we can't just give her $8,200. I said, tell Anaya and her mama, they don't know this, this is the first time they're hearing it, that in crazy faith on behalf of Transformation Church, believing that it just won't get better, but God's going to do a creative miracle. I, 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 hey, I need y'all to come with y'all faith with me. We're sending a check to you for $25,000 to be able to take care of the brain boot camp and get whatever therapies you need going forward in the name of Jesus. And then we th heard about a 31-year-old woman, mom, I believe her name is Aisha Patterson right here in Tulsa. Aisha. Y'all know y'all creative with these names, so. She's battling breast cancer. Had a double mastectomy. It's gone through radiation. Had medical bills. The last of it is about $15,000. We came together and said, you know what? She survived all of those fractures. And as a church, we're going to wipe out that medical debt. So, Aisha, I want to let you know that $15,000 is taken care of because of the generosity of Transformation Church. Is she here? She here? Where's she? Come here. Come here. Bring. Oh, y'all better. I didn't even know. Bring your family. This, oh, I love God. I love him. I didn't know you were going to be here. Give me a hug. Man of God. So I didn't know y'all was going to be here. So can I hold you? Come on. So I didn't know y'all were going to be here. So God told us to take care of that $15,000. But y'all have been through a lot of fractures. It's been a lot. And you have how many kids? Four kids. And it's probably been a lot on them too. So what we wanted to do, how old are you? It's okay. <laughs> how old is he? One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what we wanted to do is give your family some just needed recreation. So on behalf of Transformation Church, we wanted to take care of the medical bills, but that like don't change today. Like it's like they stop hounding you, but y'all need something to take your mind off of it. So we're sending your whole family to Disney World. <laughs> So you have $10,000 towards a complete Disney trip for your whole family. You're going to see Mickey Mouse. Can we give God praise for him sin? God bless you, bro. Thank you for being a man of faith and a man of valor. We love you. Let's go. I love Jesus. Okay. Um. Is Bobby and Hannah Benjamin here? Yeah. Are they here? Yeah, tell them come on up here. Y'all got to come. They, they told me I only got 25 minutes. Y'all got to hurt me. So, um, it's so crazy how God 
will move people in crazy faith. They, they moved here in crazy faith. And um, in the middle of a pandemic, not knowing anybody, not just literally just trusting God. And um, we found out, um, y'all know I got a thing for widows and orphans because God cares about that. Uh, this family has adopted two babies. And um, it's beautiful. What's up? I love you, man. They've, they've adopted two babies and have been walking in crazy faith. There was some medical stuff and some, uh, the team found out that there was some adoption stuff that still needed to be taken care of. And the amounts was this and that and the third and fourth, the fifth and sixth. So what we decided is that we're going to send y'all home today with a check for $25,000. Continue to do what God's told you to do and to walk in crazy faith. He sees you. He hears your prayers. And you didn't miss God. Your crazy faith is going to be spoken of all over the world. This is just the beginning. And this is the start of a flow. Can we give God a shot? Oh, y'all playing. Y'all done got tired now. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. So, um, while that's happening, um, I, I needed... Uh, should I do it? Okay, so, there was a young lady on her Crazy Faith card. Um, she, she had some brain trauma, and medical bills went crazy. Um, the debt and all this other stuff happened. J.C. Ryan... You're not here. You're Transformation Nation. I just want you to know the medical bills for $40,000 wow. that have been over your head and your mama's head, they are now no longer your problem. <laughs> Transformation Church is taking care of all $40,000 of the medical bill, up to $40,000. Can y'all give God some praise right now? There's a young lady that I heard about that has bone cancer. Uh, her name is Malia. Yeah. And I think her last name is Hyatt. Is anybody from her family here today? Yeah. Where? Where they at? Come here. Come here, Dad. Come here, family. This family has been walking through a whole bunch. 15-year-old, my 15-year-old having bone cancer? And these people have been faithful, been serving, and been loving. They did kind of like Joseph. They, they still were going to be fruitful, even though they were fractured. What's up, Dad? Hey, today I just want to let you know that um, God, God heard somebody or saw something. And I don't know... I don't even want to try to figure out what you've been feeling to watch your baby go through what she's going through. But as a church, we want to let you know, number one, we're praying for you and with you. We're standing for you and with you. And we want to help relieve some of that medical pressure. So Transformation Church, on behalf of God and all of the crazy faith givers, we want to relieve up to $50,000 worth of medical debt. Oh, y'all better come on. And we want this Christmas for you to breathe a little differently. Can we stretch our hands towards this family right now, even believing for their daughter in the name of Jesus? Cancer, you are a name, but the name of Jesus is higher. And even for these sisters who I can even feel that their faith has been fractured. God, I'm asking you to do a restoration in their belief in you right now, God protect and cover this family be with Malik right now and God we're thanking you that one day on this very stage we will shout that she is cancer free oh I need somebody to see it before you see it today I need Transformation Nation to praise like that's today Father God we thank you in advance that she is cancer free have your way is our prayer in Jesus name we agree amen can we give God praise one more time I love y'all so much. Thank you. Mm. God bless you. Mm.
How good is God? Bree, how did we get here? Dad said it. He said, by faith. How, how did we get here? By faith. How did God sustain us? How did God make you the one that's going to bless your whole family? This one personal. Where's Melody? Come here, Mel. Where you at? She's one of our worship leaders. Probably one of the smartest people I know in the world. I, I've, uh, I've known her all my life, and um, I know the enemies tried to put a lot of fractures in your faith. Your middle name is faith. And uh, you and Josh have been believing God for some things. And um, one of the things you've been believing, I remember literally, you went to TU and you did all of this stuff. And you got one semester away from being able to finish. And there's been like this $7,500 thing that's been over y'all for years for you to be able to get your degree and do all that other stuff. Go tell T you give you your stuff. Because today, your debt to Tulsa University is retired. It's only crazy. Until it, y'all better rejoice with them. That's new jobs, new opportunities. Bye-bye, student loans. That felt good. That felt good to retire a student loan. Should we do one more? I said, should we do one more? Is Angel Smith here? Is she here? No, she might not be here. She not here. But somebody find Angel and tell her she's an ORU uh, graduate that was about to be graduating with $29,434.92 of student debt. She put it on her crazy faith card specifically. Somebody tell her and the whole Smith family that she gonna graduate with no student loan debt. Y'all better rejoice. Y'all better rejoice. You better rejoice like it's your kids. Somebody can do it for you. You better rejoice like you gonna do it for somebody. There's a flow. All right, real quick. I need all these people to come up on the stage real quick. Um, Felicia Banks. Sade Horse Chief. Um, it's Lauren and John. Um, how do you, how, Lauren and John, how do you say the last name? Benderez. How, what's that again? If you know who you are, come on the stage. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know how your parents was that creative. Just come on, just go on, stand right there, and you go on, stand right there. And then, um, yeah, thank you. You just stand right there. And then, if I could get Rachel Block, Rachel, could you come onto the stage real quick? Rachel, where you at? Um, yeah, and then Alicia Henson, I think you even serving in production right now. Would you come for me real quick? Okay. Where, where's she at? Oh, she can't even make it on the stage. She already crying. She don't even make it. So, um, so, so, so what ended up happening is we found out that these people have been faithful in serving yeah. fractured so today in crazy faith you get a car you get a car you get a car you get a car and you get a car y'all better praise god with me Feel the presence of God. There is a flow start. Look on the screen. Those are y'all cars. Somebody shout out 
me flow. Now listen, now listen, now listen, now listen. No strings attached. You've been faithful for years. This young lady gave her car away in crazy faith. She gave it to y'all. God knew her name was on a list to receive a car before she even gave it away. You've been without a car for seven days. And God has created. Y'all moved here from Florida in crazy faith and now God has created. Oh, there's something special about you. You believe in God for $6,000 to pay off your car. So we're giving you that too. Well, what's she going to do with the other car? That's between her and God. But she got, she got a new car and she is going to be able to pay off the one she got. And God said, I see you. I see you. I see you. I heard you and I haven't forgotten about you and today you will be able to mark this day for the rest of your life that God Jehovah Jireh is your provider will somebody give God a huge shout of praise is that how you shout shout with somebody okay I'm just trying to make sure Somebody shout, flow! There's this organization in Arkansas called the Ambitious Girls that they are helping to educate adolescent teen girls in empowerment and exposure. And we found out that they needed a 15 passenger van. Will somebody tell Ambitious Girls and their whole team that there is a 15 passenger van on the way to Arkansas right now? Brand new to be able to pro to pick up and do whatever you need to do, yeah. Okay, so some of y'all you know that, um, this is fun. Um, some of y'all know that um, we just moved into new global headquarters over at the, uh, the uh, former Unicorp building. Um, we call it Transformation Towers. And uh, um, one of the things God um, gave us in that facility was the ability to be able to uh, move in with a company that rented out the first and second floor and um, yeah, so Come on some Unicorp people in the building Matter of fact, hey, Unicorp in the house. Come on. Matter of fact, Alicia come here real quick yeah. Oh, you th it seemed like a setup to me So one of the things that we we've been doing is um um we decided we were going to be good neighbors. Have we have been. <laughs> and so we've been having dinners and lunches and giving gifts to Unicorp um, as much as we can, just loving on these people and letting them know how much God cares about them and that we, we may be young and play loud rap music sometimes. Um, like yeah, she said, well, they like it. Okay. So, uh, so we found out that um, your car is just, <laughs> demon possessed <laughs> and that you have to anoint it with like a quart of oil every five miles it's not, that bad. <laughs> not what I heard uh, so we decided that um, oh we didn't want to just sow into Unicorp as a whole we wanted to pick somebody specific and so I just want to let you know over at Unicorp there's a new car waiting for you That, that's your car right there. That's your brand new. That's your brand new car. No strings attached. Oh my God is in the blessing business. Somebody shout at me, flow. It's a flow of faith. If he can get it to you, can he get it through you? We just leaving her up here. Somebody escort her off or something. Dang. Y'all just see like, oh. 
Dang. Y'all just, just, come on, team. Golly. I was a visitor. Come on, get somebody over here. Golly. Be- bewildered in the blessing. <laughs> hey, Transformation Nation. Um, this whole thing is moving past this studio and going to y'all. <laughs> Um, there's a guy named Joe Rover in Springfield, Missouri. Um, <laughs> we found you on the crazy faith wall. I guess you came here. We hadn't met you, but God knows you. Ah, we haven't met you, but God knows you. Will somebody tell Joe Rover that he and his family that were believing for a brand new car? In the mail this week. <laughs> oh, will y'all shout for Joe? He not here to shout for himself, but I bet they turn it up in the living room. Cause you got the keys, the keys, the keys, the glory to God. Okay. All right, let me keep moving. Lauren. Okay, John. Oh. Do I got a camera that can follow me? Can you give me a camera that can follow me real quick? Are they here? All right, cool. Follow me this way. Now let me go this way. Let me go this way. Y- y'all with me? Okay. Man. No, 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 this is for you. Oh. Hey. Hey. Hey, Miss Joan. Hi. I've watched you serve faithfully oh my God. for my whole life. And I've seen God use you to facilitate help to men and women of God all over the country. And I know COVID has really fractured a lot of things, but the one thing you are not gonna be doing is catching the bus around here. So on behalf of Transformation Church, I wanna let you know that there is now a new flow for you. And these are the keys to your brand new car. Oh, come on. We love you. Come on. You're talking about somebody. That's your car on the screen right there. That's your, put the car back on the screen. Let us see our brand new car. Glory to God. Somebody shouted me, Flo. Okay, so this one is personal transformation church staff. There was a cleaning staff person at our Bixby location. Her name was Miss Sylvia. So Miss Sylvia made an indelible mark on our staff and everybody was super sad when we moved to the building and Miss Sylvia didn't come with. There was like, I thought Miss Sylvia just came with the situation. And we heard that Miss Sylvia um, needed some new transportation. So Miss Sylvia and her husband, I hope they're watching right now. If not, somebody can text her. Um, there's a brand new car <laughs> with your name on it, Miss Sylvia. And the Bible says the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And today your name has come up before heaven and God wants to bless you. But the team loved Miss Sylvia so much, I just felt like we couldn't just, we couldn't just help her. We need to keep the flow. So, so we heard that Miss Sylvia was working on um, her um, citizenship and that it could get super expensive and lawyer fees and all these different things. So Miss Sylvia, we want to let you know that Transformation Church is going to help you with your lawyer fees to help you get your citizenship. Come on, y'all. And so the, the, the last thing I want to let you know is that um, Miss Sylvia has been working um, tirelessly for years. And I don't know the last time she's been on a vacation. So we're going to give you $10,000 to be able to just go wherever you want to go. Make sure the hotel has room service. You ain't cleaning nothing. Y'all better help me. You ain't clean. Throw the sheets up and just room service.
this everywhere and make a mess in it. Somebody shout at me, Flo! Ooh. Hey, it's, she's excited. Emily Stanton, are you here? Come here, Emily. Y'all give it up for Emily as she comes. Emily ain't even gonna make it. She not gonna make it. Will you put her crazy faith card up on the screen? I found, yeah, it's okay, Emily. It's okay, come here, come hug your chocolate brother. Come on here, come here. Come here. Where are you from, Emily? I'm from Tulsa. Yeah. I just moved to Arizona. Yeah, she moved to Arizona. And last year, she uh, put her crazy face. See, some of us been at this for years. This ain't our first year go go going into this. She wrote a bunch of things on her crazy faith card, but she wrote that she would be in health. And you know what? One of the things that I commend people who know that they're in a place that their health could be in a different place. And a lot of times we, we talk about how people got to a certain place, but we don't commend them for taking steps of progression into the way that they want. And I just wanted the team said, what could we do to help her? So we got you a Peloton and we got you. Oh, oh, y'all, we want to be practical with this. So we got you a Peloton and a subscription for a year to be able to do that so you can make that happen. But then we heard, I, I, I want to make sure I say it right, but then we heard, oh yes, that you said, I, I want to get my finances in order. I don't just want to be healthy spiritually, I want to be healthy financially. So we've gotten you, bring it right here, a, a, a whole year's package of Financial Peace University. We want you to take this. We want you to study, and we're giving you your first thousand dollars for your emergency fund. You'll learn what all that means when you actually go through it. You'll learn, you'll learn. What's your first thousand? We got you. See, y'all want to be all spiritual, and God wants to be very practical. Is that going to help you? But we... We couldn't stop but just, we couldn't give you a vehicle that you can't move in because the Peloton, it just stay there. You just, you can't even like take it to the market or nothing. Like, so we got you a brand new car. It's only crazy until I, will y'all praise with Emily? That's your car up there on the screen right there. Give God some praise. I knew she wasn't going to make it. We praise God. <laughs> we praise God. I said we praise God. God is the one that gives us the ability. God is the one that saved us. Jesus is the one who gives us the ability to have generosity in our heart. We praise God. All right, sit down. We almost done now. Finally, I know y'all are so frustrated. Hey, I heard flow. Is it somebody say flow? Okay, cool, 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 cool. I just needed to make sure we could flow in faith. Do y'all see how this relates back to the story? Is that God blessed but it could have been famine if the people had the wrong heart if they would have if Joseph would have said no they don't deserve this well I don't know what they're gonna do if that no 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 Joseph decided to allow it to flow and people didn't experience famine because of the faith of a group of people mm. um, Elizabeth Schofield and Transformation Nation um, we heard that you lost your father recently and because of it your mom's been having to work and you almost lost the house and all you needed was $20,000 to pay off the house but $20,000 might as well be $20 million when you don't have it so, so Emily that's what she put on her crazy faith card nothing for herself but so that her and her mom could not have to worry, this is a widow, about a place to stay. 
So will somebody get in touch? She's probably watching right now. Elizabeth, you can tell your mom that your house is paid off now because we're sending y'all $20,000 to be able to own your home. Let's give God some praise for that. Frank and Sophia, Katali, Katali, you know who you are. Another person that lost their husband, a widow. This is, again, this is important because this is important to God. We're sending you a check for um, $25,000 to help you be able to do everything that God so, so this was a crazy story. Um, they visited our church and we found their crazy faith card in the window. Like nobody was here. It was before the rooms opened up. They had nobody to talk to, but they drove here from another place and just said, if I could just get on a property and I'm going to just, I'm going to put my faith in somebody from our team found it, had no name on it. They had to search for days, but God found you. And so we're sending you $25,000 to help you with the things that are on your crazy faith card. Somebody give God some praise right now. All right, this one. Uh, hey, Crystal Cruz, come here. So we heard that the, this last season has been really hard on your family. She came here last year as an intern, no longer in the internship, just, just being faithful wherever God's called her to be. And um, they had some medical issues with their mother in the hospital and all of, due to her dad taking off of work and all this other stuff, had tons of debt that just piled up. So we just want to let you know this is going to be a good Christmas for your family. Because we're, we're telling mom and dad, like you can call them right after this and let them know that Transformation Church is sending $50,000. Y'all better worship with her. Y'all better worship with her. Those are real tears. That's God coming through. That's God doing a miracle. There is a flow that is happening. Oh, I feel the presence of God. There's worship. It's only crazy. Thank you, Lord. And we believe, we believe that this is going to be the beginning. See, I hope y'all hear that this is not, the goal is that we never have to do a moment like this in service because this is how we live. No. My question is, whose house, whose bills, whose car are you buying this time next year? Uh-oh, that's where I, that's where I know the, y'all thought, if it come for transformation, church, no, 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 no. What God is looking for is his kingdom to be established through, everybody say me. Some of y'all in this room. God is sparking your faith to believe every year I'm going to buy somebody a car. Charlie, since 2017, every year since I gave my Range Rover away, I have, I have been able to give away. I mean, I don't even know. I think we're in double digits now of vehicles that we've either paid for or given away. Not publicly, not all this other stuff. God just put on my heart, this is your new normal. And, and we gotta believe in crazy faith for it every year. It's not like, oh, this is easy. No, every time. It's like, ooh. But it's now the new. There are people that you'll see their crazy faith card posted. The church is not supposed to meet their need. You are. You was going to take it for vacation. And God's going to speak to you and say, that $2,200, 
You could do that. That's just another purse that's going to sit in your wife's closet that she's not going to wear. And you're going to try to do it because she really want to spend time with you, but you're trying to buy her time. So what needs to happen? Oh, did I? Oops. What you need to do is to sow a legacy of faith. What we doing here, I'm just trying to spark the crazy faith people. That's all I'm trying to do is get people to believe. I don't just start businesses. I invest in them with no strings attached. What happens when Julian, you're the one that can fund whatever God wants to happen on the earth? This is not about an organization. This is about everybody say an organism. And if God can get it to you, the question is, can he? get it through you and for many of us we would rather people have famine than be one to start the flow all right we're coming to the end hey i found this organization out of oklahoma city hope is alive will y'all come up here real quick so these dudes um, I did my research. Uh, these dudes do hardcore life transformation. What's up, dog? You good? I'm good. That sweater is fire. God bless you, bro. What's going on, dog? You good? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, heard about what God's been doing through you guys to help men come out of lives ravaged with drug addiction. And you guys have been faithful. You guys have been consistent. You've been good stewards. I remember we gave to y'all a couple years ago and we were back in the hallway and you brought a whole bunch of the guys and I just spoke life over them. And, and yeah, and y'all kept, y'all keep doing it. And um, some of our team went to an event y'all had in Oklahoma City um, a few weeks ago and they came back saying, Pastor, Pastor, if we don't do anything else, the transformation that's happened in these men's life. They need more. They need more help. They need more resources. These people are being trained. They're being set free. Their families are being restored. This God's doing a work in them. And I said, well, what they need? And they was like, everything. I was like, well, okay, what does that mean? And they said, well, they have a home in Oklahoma City and a home in Texas but they're looking to purchase a home to help men right here in Tulsa. And last year we bought a home for a family. Yeah, you did. But I told the team, <laughs> what would happen if we bought a home for 12 people? So on behalf of Transformation Church and Transformation Nation, you have $300,000 to go find a new home Oh, come on! This is crazy faith! This is crazy faith! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank God. Because at the end of the day, I wouldn't even, I'm not even qualified. I could be somebody in your program. I'm very in tune with the thin line of grace that I walked that allowed me to be standing here and not dead somewhere with a needle in my eye. And you're rescuing people who are the epitome of my message that have all of these fractures, but you still see the good in them. I just got one, I got one ask, okay? Like, so um, I know that your program costs and there's a lot of people, especially minorities, that can't afford it. And the program is like $10,000, $11,000. So when you build the house here in Tulsa, I, I need you to have a minority scholarship fund that is specifically for African American and Hispanics who can't afford it. And Transformation Church is gonna fund the first $100,000. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. This is real deal. So, three hundred for the house, hundred thousand for minority scholarships, and we're gonna see transformation. Oh, y'all, come on! Thank you. Man. To 
God be the glory for the things he has done. Transformation Nation, can we give God some praise? Flow. Flow. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be a part of your flow. Okay, so um, is anybody from the Tulsa Girls Home here? Are they here? Y'all come here. Y'all give it up for the uh, Tulsa Girls Home. <laughs> All right, so this is, last year we bought out a shoe store, Silhouettes, and uh, we bought like all these expensive sneakers for uh, the Tulsa Boys Home. And uh, what we ended up doing is giving all of them very high price sneakers they would never be able to buy. Bless the business, bless the boys, and it was awesome. And so this year when we started, I was like, is there a Tulsa girls home? And they were like, I don't think so. And I was like, how can we have a Tulsa boys home and not have a Tulsa girls home? And then somebody came back and was like, there was one that was just started and formed and got God's trying to do something in them but they need $275,000 to actually be able to secure a home for these eight girls or nine girls that's there. And I said, now, now hold on. You mean that young ladies who are orphans have been misplaced, abandoned, whatever the situation is by their families and they just need a, a home to go to? They just need a place for somebody to care for them. And all it would take is $275,000. That's too easy. So on behalf of God, Transformation Church, and your faithfulness, you're leaving today with a check for $275,000. Oh, y'all better help me. So that we can see God do a miracle in the lives of these young ladies. But then I was like, hold on, these young ladies have probably never had some of the experiences that our kids take for granted. And I said, like, I mean, a home is a basic necessity. Like a, a home? So y'all gonna have a home. But then I said, they need to go somewhere or do something. Could you bring that out for me? So what we did is these are some suitcases. Cause I want you to get every girl in the Tulsa girls' home, and I want you to give them these suitcases because y'all are all going to Disney World. <laughs> Everybody and four staff members are going to Disney World so that y'all can experience more, imagine more, see more, dream more. It's only crazy until it happens. God bless you guys. To God be the glory. Y'all forgot your suitcases. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things hey. He has done. Okay, I'm not done. I'll get stuck right here. Hey, could um, Ignite Church come up here real quick? So I, I asked them, I asked them to get the pastor, the pastor's kids, the whole family. I just said, just tell them, tell them, tell them the pastor needs them. Miss Katrina, I love you. Um, this has been a very difficult year for this family. This family of five lost their father. 
And um, right after starting a church, uh, starting a church and his family um, just gathered around to just do what needed to be done and um, seeing what God entrusted you with. And it, this is the type of stuff that fractures people's faith. Like, God, if you, if you knew this was going to happen, why would you call us to lead a church? And why would you, why would you put this burden on us? And why would you do this? And why would you do this? And um, it's a new church and we're starting and we can't pay people and we can't do all of this other stuff. And so this miracle is twofold because uh, the one thing I want you to know is that uh, the church is going to be okay. If God called y'all to do it, it's, but we want to sow a seed into where y'all are. So on behalf of Transformation Church, we want to give y'all $50,000. Y'all not shouting like they shout. You don't know what that'll do. Yeah. Now hold on. Bring it back. 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 Because that's just by the way. God's going to take care of the church. But God's concerned about this family. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. Okay. So, um. Miss Katria, this is not for everybody else and all the kids, because you got a lot of kids. This is a lot of kids. Y'all did the thing. So, 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 so what we're going to do is for, for each of the kids, uh, each of you are going to get a check for $20,000. Yes, but their heavenly father is still here. Their daddy's gone, but their heavenly father is still here. They're in college, they need cars, they, all the different things. Their, their earthly father's gone, but their heavenly father is still here. See, because this family, if one of them would get something, they would take it and give it to to make everything happen. That's their heart. So no, 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 no. Each of you getting a check for $20,000. And Miss Katria, because that's your heart, that would be enough that your kids were taken care of. But you're God's kid. And so this ain't for the church. This ain't for your kids. We had to set it up just like this to make sure that you would do what you needed to do to, to make sure that everything gonna be okay. So you leaving with a check for $100,000. He is faithful. He is consistent. Woo! I felt that thing. My God is consistent. My God sees what nobody else sees. My God will do what no one else will do. To God be the glory. <laughs> to God be the glory. That's who gets it. To God. This is a family worshiping right now. To God be the glory. For the things hey, he has done. Sing that next part. Through his blood. Yeah. He has saved us through his power he has raised to God be the glory for the things he has done the best days for y'all family are not behind you they're in front of you the fractures that were caused by all the church hurt and by serving and not getting paid and y'all watching y'all family invest and give and it's bamboo season. God is about to reward y'all openly for the seeds you've sown privately. This is just the beginning. 
This is not a, this is not a finale. This is not, this is the start of a flow. And I'm prophesying to each one of your kids, you will be pillars of resource that God, even as he raised you in stature, that's how you will be in areas of finance and influence and ideas. God is going to bless this family for the years of sowing. And what's going to happen is he did it like this so you would know what to do when he brings you to a place of fulfillment. That you will be a place of flow. That people will come to you and you won't cause famine because in another season they hurt you. Or in another season they couldn't see what God was doing. You're going to allow there to be a flow. We speak life over everything that your hands touch. And from another, this is a whole nother church, y'all. But from transformation to y'all, we declare the blessing of God. We declare favor, fruitfulness, and fulfillment in everything that you do. And Ignite Church, today is the day of a new beginning for you. You will not mourn any longer, but there will be joy that comes for the spirit of heaviness. We praise God for what he's doing in your life. Will somebody in Transformation Church and Transformation Nation give God a shout of praise? I love y'all so much. I'm gonna hug all y'all afterwards. It's 10 of y'all. Okay, glory to God. I gotta get in church. I'm tired. Y'all didn't know giving is work. I appreciate you. Glory to God. But no, no, no. I'm trying to teach you something right here. I want to teach you that as hard as you prayed to get it, you have to work that hard to give it. Nobody teaches you this. But I want to teach you because some of y'all are about to walk into a level of, of resource that God's going to allow it to flow. Do not get weary working to get it to them. See, because a lot of times you think, well, this should be easy to get. This should be easy. Like, we have a team of people that got to do a bunch more work. It's like, we give you $3,000. Okay, now we got to figure out, is your medical bill real? We got to figure out who does it go to? Like, we got that. Because we're a steward of what God's giving. You say it's $40,000. we are going to make sure. Because <laughs> God trusts us. For the flow, we're not going to let nobody stop the flow around here. So, so what I'm saying is, this week, when God asks you to turn on the flow, but that means i got to turn back around and go into that store and it's cold outside. It takes work to be a blessing. But it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. I got one more. I think I got one more. That's it? Okay. Is um, Brandon Jones in the house? Brandon, come here. I know you weren't expecting to come on the stage today. And he's brought his four kids. Y'all come on up here. Yeah, y'all come here. Y'all come here. What's up, dog? What's your name? What's your name? Brayon. Brayon? What's up, B? You good, man? What's your name? Bryden. Give me five, man. Hey, mom. How you doing? Okay. You got four kids, right? All right. So, uh, come here, Brandon. Stand next to me. He don't know what to do. He's just like, what is about to happen? All right. Brandon is a young black male in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And because of some circumstances, he's raising four kids by himself in a one-bedroom apartment. How old are your other kids? Two. Two? Four. Four. It's a testimony that he's standing here. Yeah. I got four kids with a wife. And some days it just be like, ugh. I'm proud of you, man. For in a, in a place where a lot of men walk away from their responsibility. Y'all, y'all bash people on the internet, but we got an opportunity to thank God for somebody who's stepping up. He's not perfect. He's not perfect. 
but he's progressing. And we heard about the story and we heard about the generation of young men that you're raising. And uh, we heard that your car has 300,000 plus miles on it. What? <laughs> and that you've just been faithful. Oh, is those your baby girls? Oh, I'm this, I can't. <laughs> Y'all come here, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Y'all get a shot of the bay, oh my goodness. With the Serena and Venus berets, oh my, um, the little beads, oh my goodness. Okay, uh, and like, when you go home, like, it's you with them, right? You said that so confidently. I, I commend you, bro. So the first thing that we need you to know is that you can't ride around in that car with 300,000 miles, no more. These kids need safety. So on behalf of Transformation Church, God and Transformation Nation, here are the keys to your brand new vehicle, my bro. It's love. He don't even know what to do. It's love. Okay. But these babies can't be staying in a one-bedroom apartment. So I want to let you know y'all all have an assignment this week. Y'all going to get in the new car, and then you're going to drive around Tulsa, and you're going to put a little app on your phone called Zillow, and you got $250,000 to go find you a new house for you and your children. Oh, y'all better rejoice. These kids will not be in that situation. Would y'all give God praise? Listen to me, bro. God's saved you. I don't know your situation. And there would be more candidates that would be perfect for this who lived a certain life. God chose you. There's a purpose on your life since before you came out of your mother. And today, God wanted you to know it's time to answer the call fully and completely. And we believe that this is a sign of crazy faith that's going to follow you forever. And eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the great things that are planned for you and these children. Y'all are going to touch the world for Jesus. I believe it. I see it. And we speak it in crazy faith in Jesus name. Amen. Transformation Church. Can we give God some praise right there? I love y'all. Now, is that how you shout? When God... To God be the glory. To God. I'm tired. I got to sit down. Be the glory. To God be the glory for the things He has done. All right, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. I don't want anybody to ever get this twisted. Transformation Church today was a conduit. We were not the source. We were a resource. None of these people have to do anything for us ever. Because when it leaves our hands, God saw that we had the heart to give where he directed us to. And whatever happens after this, that's them and God. At this moment, I want to challenge you to go and do the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't get to experience all of this and stay the same. You don't get to be in this atmosphere. Some of y'all watching in other countries and God not say, now this is what I want you to do. Share this with every person you can find this week. Because God wants there to be a revival of crazy faith and generosity that rises up over the entire world. But it starts with the church.
We've been looking for Bill Gates and tech people and all this stuff to do something that we have the ability to do. If we would surrender our heart and live in obedience to crazy faith. Today, what happened was just the beginning uh, of not a lifestyle of crazy faith, but a legacy of crazy faith. Today, I want to give you the opportunity to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Because it's the only thing that could make a selfish person like me be so transformed that giving would become more appetizing and intentional in my life than receiving. And we have now led a church into this level of generosity. The only reason is because God gave to me first. He gave me something more precious than any check. He gave me Jesus. He literally saw me in my addiction to pornography, in my manipulation. He saw me with a potential felony case for a car insurance fraud and said, I can transform him and change him. And then I can use him to inspire other people to believe me. And there could be a movement that starts all over the world of crazy faith. And today I want to take you back to the first thing that all of us need to allow the flow of God in our life. It's Jesus. Jesus is the reason we give. Jesus is the reason we love. Jesus is the reason we serve. And Jesus is the reason we live. Today, we're about to pray. And if you are watching this or in the room right now and you've never allowed God to take up residence in your heart. Today, I want to give you the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. None of this money means anything because we cannot take it with us into eternity. The only thing that we can do is leave a legacy of faith that points people toward eternity. And today, God wants to give you the opportunity to live, walk in crazy faith through salvation. Or let me call it saving faith. According to Romans 10, 9, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. And I even feel this right now. There have been people that have been living lukewarm. I need Transformation Church to pray right now. There have been people that have been living lukewarm. You've been living such a lukewarm life. You know the right thing, but you haven't surrendered to God. You haven't been obedient to him. You haven't been living in the ways that you know you should. Today, God says, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. I brought you here through giving and all this other stuff right now so that I could get the thing that's more precious than money. The Bible calls it true riches. It's people who now their lives need to be transformed by the loving grace of Jesus Christ. If you want to be added in this prayer that we're about to do, you're saying, Pastor, I want to give my life to Christ. Today is the day of salvation. I want you to just lift your hands no matter where you're at. If you're at your cubicle, if you're sitting with friends, if you just, just stop uh, drinking and smoking a blunt, it doesn't matter. See, people care about that stuff. But God doesn't care where you're at. He knows exactly where you are. And some of you are like, Pastor Mike, but if I got a couple of habits, I need to get together. God says, no, 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 no. If you would give me your heart, I'll help you change your habits. Today is the day of salvation. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand and I want you to say this prayer with me. One, you're making the greatest decision of your life. Two, I'm so proud of you, but more than that, your name is going to be written in the Lamb's book of life and your eternity is going to be secured. Three, lift your hands wherever you are if you want to make that decision for Jesus. Listen to me. You can put your hand down. There are hundreds of hands that just went up. How do you know, Pastor Mike, you can't see them? Every week. Hundreds of people text us, this is my name, this is my number, this is where I live, and I just gave my life to Jesus. Can I tell you how many people made that decision this year? Over 45,100 people. Oh, y'all better, y'all better stop acting fake in this room. 
That's the reason our church exists. And today, your name is going to be added to the name of thousands of others that are coming into the love of Jesus Christ. Transformation Church is a family. Nobody prays alone here. So I want us all to pray this prayer for the benefit of those who are coming to Christ. Everybody say, Lord, thank you for seeing me with my fragments. Thank you for seeing me. Thank you for sending Jesus. I believe he lived, he died, and he rose again just for me. Today, I give you my life. Change me. Renew me. Transform me. I'm yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. Transformation Church, can we give God praise? For the thousands of people, no, 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 no. Y'all shouted over $100,000 more than y'all shouted over salvation. Let's give God, y'all better help me, the praise, the glory, and the honor. If you just made that decision, I want you to text the number on your screen and let us know. We want to walk with you. We want to give you resources. We want you to get sermons and, uh, and all kinds of connected in community so that, that you can be transformed. I'm telling you, this year will be the best year of your life if it is your best year spiritually. Transformation has come to you. I feel the presence of God right there. There's a flow. Can we just worship for a second? There's a flow. For all that God did today, our response, just stand all over the building at your house and just lift your hands and God, there's a flow. There's a flow. Thank you, God. One more time. There's a flow, it's flowing to me, it's flowing through me, it's flowing to me, it's flowing through me, it's flowing to me, it's flowing through me, hey, it's flowing, say it by faith, it's flowing through me, it's flowing to me, it's flowing through me, it's flowing to me, there's a flow. time everybody there's a flow there's a flow God's done something monumental in this house today and I just got to stop and thank Transformation Church for being such a generous church we may never see the impact of what our faith did today but I promise you it's being recorded in heaven Sleep good tonight, <laughs> knowing that God has used us. Remember, this wasn't about Joseph. God blessed Joseph for the sake of others. This is the new standard of how we live. I know somebody was doing math the whole time and trying to figure out, like, carry the two minus one divided by three. That was how many cars, how many, I know you were doing it. So let me just go ahead and tell you today, in one service, at one time, with no strings attached, for the glory of God only, we were a resource in crazy faith to give away seven million dollars. This may be normal for you, but over seven million dollars was given away to take glory to God. Bishop, would you join?
join me, please? Um, there, there is something that's going to haunt you after this moment. You'll never be able to not experience what God has done in this place today. You are a part of history. And today, Bishop, I think it would only be right that you close us out in prayer because this is the vision. I'm emotional right now because on this very stage, he handed me a baton. And he said, I want you to take what God's given me to the next level. And today, Bishop, I thank you for believing in me enough to give me an opportunity to start living and leading our church in crazy faith. So today, would you just speak a blessing over all of us? Now, I need y'all to receive what God is about to do. And we're going to go home. We're going to eat. Y'all, some of y'all done cried and cried and did the tissue and snot. And some of y'all going to cry tonight. You're going to think about the goodness of God. And, and then some of y'all, God's giving you a plan right now to keep this flow moving. And he's telling you and showing you what you need to do. This is just the beginning. Somebody shout at me. Flow. flow. Just lift your hands up to God. Father, we thank you that we have been witnesses of your glory of your manifestation, of your miracle working power. We thank you for all those that were blessed. We were blessed by the word that was life changing in itself and the demonstration of what you can do through people that are willing to say yes to you. So we thank you, Lord. Not only we were witnesses today, but in the future, there will be a witness from our lives that we can do the same. I thank you. I even out of this room and those that are watching, the hundreds of thousands of people, Lord, we thank you. Millions will flow into the kingdom of God because of their faithfulness and the witness this day of what you've done. We're so grateful and so honored that you would allow us to be a part. We give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Come on, say thank God. Thank God. Go out and live a transformed life. Let's get God some praise right there.